beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so on you and you here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed spirits to our minds and to our bodies for you are the one given to us by Jesus to help us understand the kingdom to help us understand his power to help us understand the majesty and the realities of the spirit we thank you we honor your presence we honor your wisdom Lord I pray that tonight you will open us up again to the mysteries of the kingdom may we encounter your power may we encounter your light turn us into signs and wonders do this and bring glory to the father in the name of jesus christ hallelujah please keep standing first corinthians chapter four those two verses then we'll sit down first corinthians chapter 4 paul made a statement he said let a man so account of us as the ministers of christ number one and then he calls them stewards custodians a steward is one who has been trusted with something there are men that the bible calls stewards of the mysteries of god stewards like i give you a bible i say please hold it for me and every time they are looking for that bible they make reference to you because you have been made a steward in matthew 25 he made other stewards of his financial resources is that true so the bible says let a man please keep it there let a man so account of us as of the ministers of christ but then much more than that, that we are stewards of the mysteries of God. Verse 2 says, moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Faithful in what? Faithful in communicating those mysteries. Moreover, it is required that if at any point by the grace of God, you are made a steward of any dimension of the mysteries of God, your assignment among other things is faithfulness to make sure that you continually communicate those mysteries until the people that god has committed to your care rise to the reality you see stewards are dispensers the, the whole idea is not for them to keep it it is that it flows to the people it's just that by the election of grace they are the communicators of this reality stewards of the mysteries of god not stewards of preaching brothers and sisters let me tell you the truth with all humility there are preachers but there are stewards of the mysteries of god 
are we together you know that a dimension of god was allocated to certain personalities and the bible encourages them to be faithful unbending ensuring that people enter that dimension i like you to open your mouth and cry to god in one minute and say lord the dimension of the mystery that has been committed i receive it i receive it i receive it are we praying lord we thank you and we accept with all humility the privilege of being stewards of the mysteries stewards of the mysteries the secrets of god hallelujah please sit down good evening everybody We're in for a serious time tonight. Just smile at someone close to you and say good evening. Are we together? Praise the Lord. It's always my joy to bring the word of the Lord. I remain faithful to this task. It's a grand grace in Jesus' name. I just want to specially appreciate Honorable. Honestly, it was a big surprise. God bless you, sir. Praise the Lord. All the way from Adamawa State through Abuja and he gave us a big surprise. God bless you, sir. Thank you. John Terry from Adamawa State House of Assembly. God bless you, sir. The Lord honor you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. In this kingdom, we rise not just by desire, but how much light we have accessed and engaged not only accessed i used to say accessed alone but i found out that was not very accurate we rise in this kingdom not just by how much light is available but how much light we have accessed and engaged you can access it meaning you are not in ignorance of its operation but not engage it you will not see anything we rise in this kingdom brothers and sisters on the strength of the light the illumination the precepts of the kingdom that we have both accessed and engaged accessing it is a product of humility and desperate pursuit but engaging it is the product of faith accessing the word is not faith it gives you potential to manifest faith until you begin to engage the word. I've said it that faith is simply a product of understanding, obedience, and courage. Understanding. You cannot act upon what you do not understand sustainably. Obedience. The ability to do to the latter and the courage to stay there regardless of the temporary results that you see. Are we together? So may I remind us again that desire is not enough to rise in the kingdom. I desire to encounter the anointing. Wonderful. But that in itself will never expose you to dimensions of the anointing. I desire to encounter the spirit of revelation. Wonderful. But that will not bring you into those dimensions. I desire to walk in kingdom wealth and prosperity wonderful but that will not bring it that way i desire to live long i desire to live strong i desire to be a leader i desire to be great our society is full of desire that's wonderful it's a good starting point except for the fact that desire alone will not amount to anything people desire to be anointed they desire to be blessed they desire to receive miracles they desire deliverance they desire healing but they stop at the level of desire and then believe that that's all they need to do no desire sponsors the appetite and the fortitude for pursuit when there is desire you will defy every excuse you will defy every consequence and pursue your pursuit gives you access your desire gives you the inner strength the tenacity the staying power to pursue information pursue light pursue an encounter are we together 
then if and when you have that encounter you have access to it now the next thing is to put your understanding to work to engage that truth you know the engaging part is where i truly believe that the church of the lord jesus christ has failed very well i have said it again and again that i don't believe the church of god is in ignorance necessarily by the grace of god the servants of god scattered around nigeria africa and the world have done well commendably well in being faithful dispensers of the mysteries of the kingdom are we together yes we give that credit to all the pastors the prophets the apostles the teachers and all the people who have contributed in supplying dimensions to the body of christ bridging the ignorance that is in the body but the results have not been very significant because we have stopped at the level of access and we believe that the moment you find truth automatically it should produce result no sir no sir truth must be engaged engaged to produce this mic has great potential to amplify my voice so that people can hear both within this vicinity and then through the power of the internet across the nations of the world but until this device is engaged accordingly not engage as you wish there is a pattern engage accordingly then it releases the full strength of it i can drop this mic and shout and there is a mic that is capable of amplifying my voice but i can turn and live a very very hard life i have access to the mic but i have not engaged it accordingly is that true so please let us deliver ourselves from this this um, is a combination of pride and folly that sweeps across the body of Christ that because we have accumulated a compendium of a lot of knowledge it automatically means that our lives will be a reflection no sir accumulation of spiritual information does not produce result it is the supply of the grace and the advantage of that grace that you take to engage to engage Engaging is very important. To engage means to put the, the word of God to work. You engage it and stay there. Then it is at the point of engaging the word that God's integrity is committed. There are many people when you teach on tithing, they will help you finish the message. But they don't engage it. They don't do it. They do it occasionally. How about those who do not engage the power of speaking the word in faith how many people know about the mystery of a dance the mystery of praise how many people really do it is that true it is the doing that's why when an evangelist finishes preaching it doesn't say now that you have listened to me you are going to heaven you can be in that crusade ground and go to hell you can even be part of the organizer and still go to hell at the end of it he gives room for engaging are you here and you want to give your heart to the lord and then people come out it is only those who come out that we pray for we bless everybody but we pray for those who come out as a sign that the message has touched them they have understood and they have responded in Acts chapter 4 the Bible says that Paul and um, Peter and, and, and John they were on their way to the temple and whilst they passed the beautiful gate the Bible says they saw a man that had been crippled from birth there at the gate asking for arms and the bible says that he requested that they helped him you know like beggars would do and then peter looked at him and said silver and gold i do not have any but such as i have i give unto you in the name of jesus he said rise up and walk access but the man was there the bible never said he got up then the bible says peter help me pastor alpha peter held his hands and forced him to engage you see it is at the point of obedience that the power is released not when the word just comes this is the dynamics of results until the word of god is engaged with faith and understanding the word of god is as barren as whatever it is 
So the Bible says he held his hands and while he motioned on him to rise. You see that? At that point, the Bible says he leaping stood. That guy would have remained there and the apostles would have gone. The power of God hovering around. How about God? Genesis chapter 1. The Bible says there was darkness from the Hebrew word tohu wabohu. Darkness, confusion. And then the Bible says the spirit of God, the very force that is responsible for results and creation was hovering around. But no change happened until God said. And God acted. He engaged and said, let there be light. Be light. Appear. Reappear. And then there was that and he said it and he saw it believers are largely not in ignorance so while we seek to open the body of christ to greater frontiers of revelation i am very concerned about our engaging the ones we know already because the truth of the matter is that if we commit ourselves diligently our life should begin to command certain levels of notable results you see, the Bible talks about a certain group of people. It says they are ever learning. Is God blessing us already? Ever learning, meaning that they have an appetite. And that's supposed to be a good thing. An appetite to explore. Let's go deeper. Wonderful. Let's go higher. Wonderful. But the question is, what do you do with all the conferences and conventions and meetings and Sunday services, Wednesday prayer meetings? Many believers receive prophecies. They receive words. They study the Bible. They read books. They have volumes and volumes of jottings. Access. But they do not engage. And so at the end of it, they are disappointed. They are angry at themselves and at God. And they are almost tempted to say, Lord, your word did not work. And God says, no, 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 let's be fair. Show me what you did. From January till now, how many times did you tithe? Say, Lord, let's not talk about that one. Just did you bless me or not? And God says, look at it. Lord, you didn't heal me from the pain. And God said, did you do what was told to do? The day an instruction was given to celebrate and praise. When the Bible says rejoice in the Lord, how many times did you commit yourself to obeying it? Rejoicing not just as what you want to do, but as a key to your breakthrough. Are we together? Engaging the word. Let me tell you something. The Bible says the kingdom of God, that you have to become like a child. Do you know why? Um... In our civilized 21st century society where we are so right conscious, we don't want anybody violating on anything. I, I, you know, don't violate me. I'm a citizen. I'm intelligent. I went to school. We are so right conscious. It's very difficult for us to submit ourselves to the simplicity of the truth of God's word. Are we together now? The word of God declares this is what must be done to receive this outcome. We argue we explain intellectually. We bring all kinds of even spiritual and theological dissertations to explain away the simplicity. And God says, well, I'm not the one in need. You are the one who is looking for the solution. Look how difficult we make it to get the anointing. Look how difficult we make it to be prosperous. Look how difficult we make it to rise. Look how difficult we make it to get the power of God. Let me tell you the truth. The difficulty is that I think sometimes we preachers do not show people where to engage the word. We dispense the word. But at the end of it, we do not leave our sermons with the action point. The very point. And that's where members don't like. That's why we like prophecies a lot. Because it's an extension of our desire to refuse to act upon the word most members hate it when you commit to them and say okay i have shown you this is now how you engage and they say no no can't you what is prophesy this thing and let me move forward i don't know how many people i counsel and i tell them oh apostle this is what is going on this is this and that and i tell them okay uh, go to the media stand pick one or two messages listen to it and come back I see how they turn and greet somebody and just move around. And highest, they check around and see um, if there is an opportunity for a joke. And they, you know, believers, 
We are spiritually lazy. Not because we don't fast and we don't pray. But that point of engaging the word. One of the greatest blessings of the life and the ministry of Bishop David Oyedeko in my life is that among other things, his nature of dispensing the word is such that he shows you what to do. Good master, the rich man said, what must I do to be saved? He wasn't saying, can I save myself? Lord, I know that it is within your character to partner with men. Where is my own part of the deal? We hate this talk. And you know, the Western world, may God bless them. We have received so much from them. But I think that this, this error of allowing God to do everything to show his sovereign, claiming that any, whether we add anything to it or not, it cannot be done. No, brothers and sisters, listen. The Bible says the heavens, even the heaven of heavens is the Lord. It says, but the earth has he given to the sons of men. There will always be a cooperation, a partnership between God and men for anything serious to happen. God is still sovereign, but he has chosen to limit himself so that men can also be reflectors of his glory. Please learn this. If anything is to change in your life, it is not all up to God. There is a part where you have access to light and then engage that light. Access to it and you engage it. Not access alone. We have done pretty well in understanding it. So as I dispense these truths by the grace of God, alongside all the men and women of God scattered in this nation and around the world, please, i like us to make a commitment that we will not only be hearers, will not only be receivers in terms of just hearing it into our ears, but that we will always search for the areas that will require our own partnership. Your partnership with the word of God does not negate what God has done. Your partnership with the word of God is what makes it your experience. Until you partner with the word of God, it remains a prophecy or a promise. It is your engaging the word that converts every promise to your testimony, to your experience. Right from the foundations of the earth, the lamb has been slain. But the day you hand over your life to Jesus, that's the day salvation becomes your experience. Is that true? The Bible says by his stripes we are healed. But the day you hear the word, you receive it and engage appropriately. The Bible says again and again that the Lord gives men power to prosper. But this is not our experience for many of us in the body of Christ. The day we are willing to not only receive the precept, but sustain the grace. You see, this is, th this is the true idea of grace. I told you grace is like love. Grace has, love has depth, height. That's how grace is. There is a dimension of God's grace that is his unmerited favor or unmerited access that means god kept that dimension exclusive to himself because there is absolutely nothing any man can do for instance the grace that saves men are we together now there is nothing a man can do by his own strength to save himself you can only partner but there is a dimension of grace that is an empowerment to do you will do the doing it's just that the energy is not yours now, this is the dimension of the grace of God that the body of Christ has not understood. So he empowers you with a capacity that is more than what you ordinarily would do. Then he will grant you grace. So he supplies that grace. Are we together now? Yes. If I prophesy to Pastor Alpha now, I am operating, a, I am doing the speaking. It is willing. He's not opening my mouth. I'm opening my mouth by myself. But I am communicating an intelligence that is not given to mere men. That intelligence, you call it the gift of the spirit. You call it the prophetic. It's what the Bible calls grace. The power to do. The power to do. Bless you, sir. Are we together? If we begin to pay attention to engaging the things we already know, Brothers and sisters, I submit to you that our lives will be a thousand times better than it is in every wise. The problem, truly speaking, is not 
ignorance i told you again and again and i'll continue to say it i do not believe the body of christ as a corporate entity is in ignorance there are still greater lands to conquer in the spirit there are still deeper dimensions that god will open us but you see the system of god is he studies what you have done with what he has given you first and that qualifies you to receive more the parable of the five two and one talent the bible says that when he granted unto them stewardship the one with five talents engaged correct the one with two talents engaged the one with one talent just buried it and left it there when the master came for accountability he said well um you were a hard man you like reaping where you don't sow so i i just thought instead of wasting my time i kept it on the guy can go and remove your thing collect your thing the bible says they collected it from that man and gave it to the one with five talents so you see increase is a product of doing something with the grace and the dimension God has given you. A pastor who will not pastor two members or ten members with all his heart and bless them and sits down pasting pictures of a million members is joking and dreaming. A man of God who will not engage diligently. God gives you ten thousand naira you mismanage it carelessly you do not find out the principles of god there's nothing in it for god there is no system of accountability and wise use of it you can't sit down and be mesmerizing on 1 million 10 million god does not work like that are we together how about anointings there are men of god who admire their whole assignment is more power and god says calm down the grace i've given you is enough to save souls even if it can't heal sick bodies now show how you have engaged that grace enough to be able to open you up to other access and say lord what is salvation anybody can do it then god grants you the grace for intercession and he said lord that one is too hard i need power direct raw power to just prophesy or lay hands and god says no you'll never work that way never work that way God is revealing to us as simple as what I'm sharing is. God is showing us the reason why the issues of our lives don't change. It's not because the word of God has failed. It is because we seldom engage the word. We complain. We receive the word. Let me tell you what most of us do. You know, when, when people complain about certain areas, I ask them, have you listened to this, my teaching? Before I finish, they smile. And the person is not getting the result, and he will listen now. He say, ah, have you listened to um, 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 evidence of genuine intimacy? They help you finish it. <laughs> and you look at this guy, and you know that this guy doesn't know God for sure. Are we together now? Yes. Then you tell him, go and listen to it. And he plays around while he's just listening, distracted, doing a lot of things, gisting with friends, and then catching up. And then he tells you, sir, I just finished. There are, there are certain teachings, one hour teaching, but I finished them in three days. One hour teaching in three days. Because every five, five minutes, I'm stopping. Jesus, something just entered my spirit. I see. I was studying something there and I almost jumped, I almost jumped from my bed. I said, yeah, yeah, what is this? He said, I've not read this Bible before. I had to look at it again. I found my Bible. Drilled the thing again. I don't know what I caught years ago that made me draw it, but that ink was already fading. I drew a fresh one to remind me that this is a fresh revelation. What? This is the Bible? Opened up another light for me. You finish a three hours message. You never pause <laughs> to listen, to learn even when something is very powerful you are just saying, wow just continue even the way you study in school brothers and sisters that's not how you do well you pause the psalmist will say sila pause ponder think write if need be pray if need be hallelujah if you don't like what i'm saying forget about results god is not a herbalist hallelujah yes. look at the aspects of your life you will see that there are certain areas you are in total ignorance but you will see that there are certain areas you already have the requisite knowledge truthfully speaking 
you already know what to do and the grace has been supplied but that spiritual nature, that laziness to comply accordingly and stay until results manifest that's what causes a lot of trouble what do you have in your house nothing except a cruise of oil and the prophet said that's it madam this is what i want you to do go why didn't the prophet prophesy vessels find your way to this poor woman's house say madam carry the energy you have left and go and borrow vessels he said borrow not a few when she came she met him and said sir i've done as you have said he said now you qualify for the next instruction close your door she would never receive the next instruction if she did not obey the last one is god speaking to us yeah and he said close the door when you close the door start engaging the oil the oil has capacity to give you any kind of miracle but when engaged and the bible says she kept pouring and the oil kept multiplying how about the widow in zarephath when the prophet came he said woman how are you fine sir water please ah i don't have much but i'm a generous woman and just bake the remaining bread for me he said we're about to eat with my son to die he said madam I'm, I'm here not because I'm hungry. I'm here so that you will survive. So, just handle this treasure is in eating vessels. You better quickly come and feed me first. The woman would have said, you are such a heartless and stupid man. You are the prophet they've been talking about. You are a wicked man. I would make sure I tell all those who have, you are, ah, ah, you see me and a child. You don't even love women. And start another funny women movement and say, look, there are prophets who don't they collect things from women and the bible says that she her engaging that thing all of a sudden she turned and discovered that the flower i'm showing you how this works how about three days they spent three days on the mountain and then the people said these guys are hungry there will be commotion here now and jesus said feed them said, ah, feed them even a year's worth of food no miracle could happen until there there was something from men and andrew found a young boy and carried his bread his, his lunch box as they call it and all of a sudden jesus lifted it and gave thanks and there was multiplication who taught you that things happen by themselves it is the dynamics of the workings in terms of god's part that is none of your business the bible says just as you do not know the way bones are formed in the womb of her that is with child nor the way of the wind that's how you cannot tell the work of god there is a part of this equation that you can never know it is sponsored by the wisdom of god for instance how your destiny helper will come is not your business your own is to engage what brings them your destiny helper can be a donkey a donkey needs to be missing for you to find Samuel. Doesn't matter. You think if God asks Saul to choose how he will receive the anointing, will he choose the, the disappearance of a donkey? Leave the acting to God. Your own is obey to the latter. And then you will watch God use anything to act that drama until you receive the anointing. Let me tell you where spiritual fatigue comes. When we want to know how the details how will i pay my rent lord i know you are faithful but let's let's be honest here and god is saying me you are telling me to be honest <laughs> do you believe what i'm saying yes so we don't engage the word at all at all master if it be thou bid me come and jesus said really you want to see a new dimension i've given you a word engage it come all of them stood and said, oh yeah. He didn't say, Peter, come. He just said, come. Whoever walked. He said, come. And all of a sudden, Peter got up and walked. And it was, it, it was surprising Peter. I'm walking. And he was laughing. And all of a sudden, he was about sinking. Many people see the sinking part. They don't see the part that Jesus stopped him from sinking. Because he had to be responsible over his word. Peter's mistake at the point of obedience had to be addressed by Jesus himself. If Peter sank, Jesus would be to blame. After all, Jesus knew he was learning. 
he said come obey him and perish and watch whether you will really perish listen learn this i'm teaching you how faith works peter he held him and said no if you walked on your own like jonah jonah was not helped because he was in disobedience so the whale swallowed him what bailed jonah out was mercy are we together these are the systems of the kingdom this is how it works guys go and preach in my name heal the sick cast out devils and jesus ah, jesus won't you go with us say no 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 just go i've given you my name say where is it say just believe keep going and when they met the first sick person um my name is sir you saw me with that other guy he really sent us i'm not really sure about this i've not mastered it but i hope you are not offended if i prayed for you and peter laid hands on someone and all of a sudden to his shock peter said this thing is working let's do it again they returned back to jesus and said hi jesus even the devils that we fear so much were subject to us in thy name and jesus said that those are little issues let's talk about don't rejoice because of that be honest with yourself tonight is it really that god has not been faithful or you have not engaged the word you have been told that prayer and fasting are keys for true revival and spiritual power be honest with yourself have you engaged it with understanding don't sit down and say god is not anointing me what do you think the anointing is not a charm you eat anything anywhere anyhow anytime no sir no sir how about breakthrough there are many of us that want breakthrough you hear people the fact that god is doing it to one person that per you see do you know why we allow testimonies the most important part of testimonies is not the result is the bridge between the problem and the solution what did the person do that's what your spirit should be sensitive about for many of us we wait till the end of it then we say wow you mean it this is how i live my life i don't sit down and tell god lord create the changes i say no lord i know i give you all the praise show me my own part and i stand up and start engaging it start engaging it start engaging it what of our family members oh god will you keep watching us like this and god says no listen to joshua selman oh god i don't have the time i'm like i was saying will you keep changing our lives and god says you are violating an ordinance it's not going to change husband is standing wife is standing children are standing devil is destroying that family and wrecking their lives they are arguing with one another and not interested in change and god says listen when it comes to this thing you can't help yourself it is by a prophet that the lord brought them out of egypt and by a prophet they were preserved even if you are a midwife when you are about to give birth you need another midwife to help you that you are a midwife does not mean you can deliver yourself listen to this and understand there are systems in the kingdom a time comes when your personal anointing cannot give you the breakthrough you are looking for. is God helping us so so many people arrogantly sit down and say what is there is it not man of god man is it not the same jesus that died for us and they sit down there and their problems continue to compound and multiply whereas there is enough grace to trivialize that problem and reduce 10 years of problems in a moment how long please help me how long listen i think it was in it was in mina over the weekend we were preaching for um bishop it was it was such a an awesome time with him and uh, bishop achaya and i was sharing there i said every anointing listen to me every challenge has the level of anointing that can address it 
that you are anointed is not generic in results the anointing is levels when your challenges are higher than your level of anointing or the level of anointing close to you you're already in trouble there are three ways to come out of that thing grow in the anointing to a level where it can surmount it or trust god for access to personalities whose price in the spirit has granted them access to the level of grace that can throw away that problem brothers and sisters in my little life i've had the privilege of seeing what the anointing of the spirit how it can rubbish a situation that is within the level the jurisdiction of that anointing to solve it almost in a moment in a twinkling of an eye and that challenge is gone but i've also seen how frustrated an anointed man can be in the face of a challenge that is higher than your level of anointing it will rubbish you as if you have never met god believe what i'm teaching you if the mysteries of the kingdom are not engaged this family now will get up and say okay we have read in the bible and let me tell you what happens they begin to pray at least it's a starting point while they pray the holy ghost will take the mother or the father to a scripture and said study the life of saul of kish do everything they did and so they start studying a donkey was missing we for us an animal was not missing let me show you how the, the holy spirit helps people what is missing joy peace love breakthrough finances spiritual upliftment what did they do they started moving around and a servant said let's go and meet a man of god and the holy spirit says go and do likewise and they stand up and the holy spirit now tells them look there's a miracle service coming you see the word of god is becoming alive you are acting you can sit down at home and say god has brought it he said we should go for the miracle service and then give all kinds of flimsy excuses it is raining i'm not very happy i didn't eat well we were not joyful yesterday those things are the ways demon spirits keep people but when you stand up as you are walking to come heaven is recording your obedience and already scheduling the system for your miracle now while you are coming you are not even sure you will meet me but you are coming anyway while you are coming you are not even sure you will have space but you are coming anyway are you seeing how this thing works you come anyway and you sit down and to your greatest shock it was never for you to meet me while the praise and worship is on fire lands on your situation and all of a sudden you see someone calling you repeated calls and you have to avoid it after Konya or whatever program you just go and check and someone is calling you and saying sir remember we were supposed to strike a deal and it didn't work I, my spirit was moving me and you say god this is you let me show you how breakthrough happens breakthrough is worked is like the working of miracles you know how you cook food you don't drop onions pepper fish whatever it is you drop on the table and just shout and say food cook no you work it how do you work it you get a pot firewood or whatever you are using you start engaging sometimes it will be painful as you are cutting something knife can cut you but you are more interested in the food than that temporary pain it's by eating the food the pain will be healed so continue and at the end of it you have a lovely meal and everybody who comes around wonders brothers and sisters it is true that god gave grace but you worked it are we together this part of engaging the word is what i want i want to drum it into our spirits nothing will change in your life just because you are a christian the word of god must be engaged hallelujah mm. sacrifices praise several things you must engage the word of god there are some of us here you have never sown a seed I'm not saying to me please don't get what i'm saying but you have never most of us is 95 percent receiving five percent giving you will be broke forever that's the equation of poor people are we together yes give me your own is to collect 
Lord, who is going to give me? And the Lord says, when are you going to create your own harvest? Have you not heard that if the cloud be full of rain, if you use a spoon to, spend, to send vapor to the air, you will spend your whole life. There are other people who don't allow challenges to last. They walk it till it gives up. They walk it till it gives up. I believe in results. I am motivated by results. I'm very, very outspoken about results. I'm not one of those people who lie to you and say it doesn't matter. It matters, sir. Results matter. Human beings were designed to remain motivated when what you engage produces. Is that true? Yes. When a woman gets pregnant, we're happy for her pregnancy and we can endure everything that the pregnancy carries provided there will be a child at the end. Is that true? Yes. When somebody, like the people sharing now, the lady that was sharing about the rigor that she went through, you know, now the most important thing is that finally the result is cleared and all of that. When you do things, the pain is when you put so much energy and time and then it does not yield results. This is what I want to cancel from our life. Hallelujah. Breakthroughs are predictable. Hmm. The help of God is predictable. The mercy of God is predictable. Results are predictable. Please, my brother, my sister, let me beg us in the name of Jesus to not sit down and hope things change. I'm delivering you from it because after 10 years, it will remain like that until it changes there are people who as of january this year wrote down a list of certain things they submitted it and asked questions lord how do i engage with you and right now god has ticked those things with results there are others all they do every miracle services god arise for me they drop it every instruction god gave from january till now they have not done one Lift up your hands, they won't lift up. Pray, they won't pray. Celebrate God. Dance around you know, all these things. How can I be a, a child? We left these things. Am I in a party? You see that? I told you about dancing. I don't like dancing. It's not anything I admire at all. But it's a, it's a key. You know how drugs are. How you swallow drugs. Sometimes when you swallow drugs, especially maybe a syrup, it can be so bitter. Especially when you are giving children. They are trying to deny, but your love keeps them there. Swallow it. When they swallow it, you pamper them later on. Swallow it. Do you pity the child? Oh yeah, I'll leave you like that. No. That's how it is. When you are obeying God, don't pity yourself. Oh. No, sir. Don't pity yourself. Abraham carried Isaac and said, up we go. When he kept looking at I said, Isaac, I love you, but this one. See, be careful. Some of us get too emotionally connected to every area of our lives that is difficult for us to get to the next level. You are emotionally connected to your money. You are emotionally connected to your title. You are emotionally connected to whatever. That's why it is difficult for us to give up things to go high. You are emotionally connected to your ministry my ministry the word of god works it is reliable this is how god has helped us by his mercy to be where we are today and this is how he will help us to rise but the key is that we engage the word the key is that we engage the word. We don't sit down and make God responsible for everything and laugh around and fool ourselves. That's not faith. No. That's not faith. You must take inventory of your life. You'll be surprised to know that this is not even my message this night. I just came and this thing started boiling in my spirit. God is my witness whom I serve. That I am passionate about seeing every one of us produce results. See, let me tell you. If you are a man of God and you are the only one rising. 
you are you are a big failure doesn't matter what you whether it's car house no i rather fail as a person and you succeed your success will turn me into a success you see that let me be honest with you in all sincerity some of the things i teach you god has helped me in those areas so it's not like i'm teaching with any interest for myself I'm hearing a song in my spirit. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory, revive us. Hallelujah. Lord, I want to become a public speaker. You dropped it here. You have not engaged the word. You found a scripture, but you have not done anything with it. Lord, I want to become a man of God. And the only thing you are thinking about is starting a church. You know, sometimes sometimes the way the way we pastors behave is why we keep struggling forever brothers and sisters if you have eight days to cut a tree use seven days sharpening the knife use seven solid days stand in the sun and sharpen the knife i promise you you will hit that tree once and it will fall but you can carry a blunt knife axe and even if they give you 90 days, the tree will not fall. Hallelujah. Don't jump into things. Take out quality time to engage this thing. Engage this thing. God is calling, let me use you promise, come. God is calling promise into ministry, for instance. Go and start a ministry in Delta or start a ministry in U.S., and the, the only thing he does is just says, wow, I, I have learned enough. You just jump and go to Delta. And after five years, you are still roaming around as if God didn't call you. In that five years, those who engage the word are swimming in grace. Whereas you are there frustrating the grace of God. After 10 years, you now leave it and say you want to go and join military or police they say your age has passed you now say you want to join something else and your life and you blame god and god says no you refuse to engage the word i told you time never changes anything it only reveals time reveals whether you have been engaging properly or you have been wasting your time but god calls this guy now and he sits down lord what kind of ministry are you giving me Oh, this is this and he's studying he's learning he's building how do we do church finances in a way that you don't play pranks on people he's learning how do we build membership when members cross 500 how do you manage them you are learning how do I grow in the anointing when I have three to five sermons to preach every week how do I manage it with my family life what if I have a business running how do I manage it this gentleman works on himself I tell you he gets up and in one year start a ministry and all the forces that should be there are there everything done whereas another person is struggling and angry now this is anger is usually a product of frustration when you try to do things and you are angry and someone comes and it becomes effortless you see one of the proof of mastery is how effortless you are when you when you execute your plans effortlessly how are you doing it and people begin to coin explanations I don't want to live a life of a failure I don't want to number one it does not glorify God number two is going to waste my time number three there are many people connected to me in the spirit and my failure is going to affect them and destroy them and tear their lives into pieces one of my greatest fears if I have any is to walk and 
to walk with God for a long time and then to find that the things I've believed are a lie. That's why I'm meticulous about the construction of my beliefs. Lord, what I believe about finances, is it accurate? What I believe about the anointing, is it accurate? What I believe about fasting and prayer, is it accurate? I'm not ashamed though. If at any point I find out there is a problem, I'm not ashamed. I, okay, Lord, let's look at this. This is what I used to believe. But now I'm seeing, I'm learning this. Wow, amazing. I'm growing. And you are just. Let me tell you something. There are many anointings to lift our family members, but it is at the mercy of their engaging. They only complain and insult. They insult every anointing that can bring them breakthrough. And they sit down and hope and wish they will learn. You will be surprised, and I don't mean to be sarcastic, you will be surprised to know how many people live within this vicinity who have never received of what God is doing. It will be shocking and surprising. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now, the trouble is, you are the one who is the patient. Who cries, the patient or the hospital? Please talk to me. When the patient insults the hospital, does the hospital have tears? The hospital will, will be busy treating those who are ready. Is that true? Lord, I don't want to live my life as a failure. Results can be commanded. This thing has been done before. I'm not asking you where you grew up, whether it's in your village or whatever. I'm not asking what has happened in your life. Brothers and sisters, this anointing we talk about is God's own ability. But are we willing to engage it to produce the required result? Do it honorably and fail. And the Lord will do for you what he did for Peter. He held his hand and lifted him. This is how God brought some of us, my brother, my sister. It's not as if anybody signed and gave any guarantee and said, start ministry if you need money, we'll support you. Start ministry if you need members. No, 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 no. Engaging by faith. When people see the results, they trivialize it. Sometimes people just talk all kinds of things. But then they do not know that these things were engaged. Access is not enough. The word, the truth, the mystery, the principle, the revelation must be engaged. It must be engaged. It must be engaged. There is a part you have to play. Play it and watch God. Watch God arise for you. As a mighty God and turn things around for you. Hallelujah. Do you believe what I'm sharing with you? This thing does not take time. It just takes commitment. If I'm building a house, listen, and I have workers building a house for me and they are working, they start working by six and by night. There are those who do night shift and are working. Is that true? And there is another lazy builder the workers come by 10 they close by two whose house will be built first you see that now the amount of commitment you give to this thing determines the result it will deliver to you there is no way around it i watch our fathers of faith and i'm surprised that with the kind of results they command you still see them engaging this thing they are working it with all their heart I was watching a video by Dr. Paul Enenche, and um, I'm saying this only because he said it. He was preaching this year at um, Bill Winston's ministry, and the Lord's Garden, the magnificent structure that they are building around the airport road in Abuja. And he said just for the, the zinc alone, just to cover that place, they are spending 16 million US dollars. Zinc, not building. 16 million US dollars in a time of recession. Debt free. Now, only a fool and a stupid person, 16 million dollars 
will more than answer the request of many ministries times 10. And this is what is used for zinking. So a wise person says, this is the result I'm looking for. It is on earth already happening in someone's life. So what do you do? You follow them who through faith and patience, what did he engage? Because he was not born like that. As at 1999, God's servant, Dr. Paul Enenche was in one room in Abuja. There were people who were in the houses, they are still there today. Because they didn't engage anything. As at 99, he was there with his wife in one room. And all of a sudden, rises to do something. There are people still there today. Brothers and sisters, if your life must change, it's not up to God alone. God's power is available. I have indoctrinated myself into being a responsible believer. That nothing will ever change. Just like that. Hallelujah. What are you doing in partnership with the word of God? Do you understand the principle and the mystery that connects your challenge or your desire and the outcome? Do you understand? Then if yes, are you engaging completely? The future will show the mysteries and the things that Koinonia is engaging. It's, it's, not, it's not something to blow trumpet and talk about now. But the future will tell what is being engaged today. You see that? Something I do not know is responsible for where I am. Something I know but have not believed is also responsible for where I am. Something I have believed but have not acted upon consistently is responsible for where I am. While you are seated, can you pray, cry to God and say, Lord, I repent. I've been handing over the responsibility of my results entirely to you. But now I have heard you. I have seen it very clearly that nothing will change by itself. Are you praying? Some of you are looking at others. Forget about them and cry for your destiny. Apostle, I graduated since five years ago. Nothing has happened in my life. Show me what you are engaging first. Let me see what you have done. I thought I would have a job. Who told you you will have a job? Just like that? Show me the mystery you engage and the mystery you are engaging. Keep praying. Show me what you are engaging. Apostle, I expected that by now I should not be begging for food to feed my family. Show me what you are engaging. Or are you just waiting for things to happen? Show me. Apostle, I expected by now that my ministry should be strong enough financially. Show me what you are engaging. Let me see it. Apostle, I expected that by now I should be flowing at certain levels of the prophetic. Certain levels of the anointing. Show me what you are engaging sir i expect that i should be established by now i should have had a car and a house show me what you are engaging don't just wish for nothing i've been coming to church that's not enough what have you engaged pray nothing will ever change my brother my sister access to truth is not enough it must be engaged though access to truth is not enough apostle i've listened to all your messages on favor wonderful have you done what was said in the message consistently have you done what was said in the message having the readiness to judge every disobedience if and only when your obedience is complete let's not turn god to a game player playing pranks and 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 expect strange results pray you don't commit 30 minutes to god 30 minutes of your life the remaining part of your life and you want to carry fire which god are we talking about here 
prayer zero word life zero passion and hunger for spiritual things zero and you want to carry the anointing no sir no sir no sir no sir show me the time you commit to study show me the time you commit to sacrificing your sleep show me how you engage with the world show me the videos you watch show me the retreats the times alone that you spend with god and i can tell you why your result is the way it is it's not magic it's not magic it's not magic hallelujah listen to me you know let me say this honestly there are many men of god who see ministries that god has blessed with crowds like this and they do not know the enormous responsibility of pastoring thousands of people they think all about standing here sometimes you see me stand here let me confess and tell you truly most of the time I stand here, most times I'm waiting on God, is when I go back that I eat something. There are times that the water you see me take here is the first thing that is entering my stomach as I stand. I'm not saying that's what you must do. After service, you see me stand here to see people. Sometimes past 12. Last week, I went home to one. Don't one crowd if you cannot engage what is going to be there. Are we together now? We want things without the responsibility attached to it. You, before you barely rest, someone has woken you. There is a challenge. You, when I came, you saw me talking on phone and I called the protocol because they needed to respond to an emergency somewhere. The people don't care that there is service. Listen. Let me tell you, for every dimension, there is a price. I, I wish, I don't know how to make you believe this thing. If you are unwilling to pay the price, please forget about the dimension. There are levels of anointing that when it comes to your life, the moment certain things are not done, it will destroy you. It's better for it to have not come. Believe what I'm telling you. Jonah, Jonah, Jonah entered a boat and people, they started losing things. And when they were checking, they said, what is making this boat heavy? Jonah said, I'm the one who, if I were not anointed, I would have slept quietly. But because of what I carried, you are suffering for something now. There are levels to not pray for when you are not ready for certain sacrifices. Oh God, open my eyes. Are you ready to pray for everything you see? Because you will see things that will disturb you. You are about to rest and you see a plane crash. You are about to rest and you see a car crashing somebody. And if it happens that way, God will call you and say, if your eyes were closed, you are free. But hence you cried and said, open my eyes. It's not about prophesying, you no. Know, there is a responsibility. Oh God, make me rich. Let me be your distributor. And God stands and says, as you are leaving your house now, carry 50,000. My people are in need of it. Yes, sir. Ha, oh, God, you said you want to be my steward. Oh, yeah, carry it. And somebody comes and while you are talking, he says, give 5,000 to Sam. There are two little children. Give all of them one 1,000. And you are acting like a fool. And God says, that's how my distribution system works. The day you are not interested, I close the heavens. As simple as that. I see a lot of greedy people admiring blessed people and think that there are people for over two months your offering is 10 naira or one year 10 years you drink is five for life how much is five for life and then you squeeze as an adult working class you come to church with 10 20 naira and drop it and say but what are these young people doing are you joking Brothers and sisters, let me submit to you. If you ever try to sow seeds like me, it may kill you in one month. I'm telling you this sincerely. Lord, make me a millionaire. He says, are you ready to sponsor 70 children? He said, no, no, I don't want that. Oh God, you gave me only two. He says, that's it. Whoever wants it my way must be ready to do my bidding. Hallelujah, thine the glory. 
Hallelujah, Amen. Hallelujah, time the glory. Revive us. Is God speaking to us tonight? Stop claiming things blindly when there is no sincerity. Oh God, give me a give me an international anointing. Okay, do you have the grace to counsel to preach three five times a week? Can you be sleeping on the road? Can you be sleeping in the air? That becomes your new bedroom. Can you sacrifice that much? It's not all about putting water and clapping. It's a sacrifice. Let me tell you this. And I stand before the God of heaven. Thank God he's here. You are spiritual people. Less than 15% of my prayers is for myself. God is my witness. Less than 15% for myself father bless your people change their story a text message comes sometimes you don't see me reply your text message it doesn't mean i don't pray over it do you have the sacrifice can people come to your house and you carry your last meal and give them everything and then they don't tell you thank you and god said it's none of your business leave the issue is between me and you please listen to me oh these are the engagings it's not just about honor it's not just about sitting i'm ready to be a man of god are you ready for the criticism everything about your life is an open book everybody criticizes everything can you sit down hearing people criticize you and still sleep sound and get up in the morning some of you who are so sensitive I think you stole my phone how can i be the thief and you are moving around and you want to do ministry you must be broken and you must be worked on by god is god speaking to us this teaching is very sincere most of us see blessed people and just admire them and i look at the greed that is in many people's lives greed you can sit down somebody is saying I've not eaten. There is 1,000 naira in your pocket. You say, go and meet apostle. Go and meet apostle. He, 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 he likes giving. Just talk to him and he will give you. And this is the person holding 1,000 naira. And you are saying, oh God, when will you visit him? And God, even scholarship you will not see. For where? Are we together? This is how this thing works, so send 200 naira recharge card to your mother you rejected it whereas somebody transferred 1000 to you and god says take 200 say how, how many and it's not like there is an important discussion and god says i'm watching your heart you are not engaging this thing let me show us why we are really not getting results let's be honest with ourselves am i engaging the word Cain got angry because of Abel's results. And God said, no, no. This is not about Abel. If you do what Abel did to the latter, will you not get his result? Hear me. It doesn't cost God to raise help for you. There is something we are not doing that is keeping the heavens closed. There is something a man of God is not doing. That's why his ministry is not growing. There is something a father, a mother, a brother, a sister is not doing. That's why we are perpetually in lack and suffering and penury. Every guy that comes to me lives in two weeks. Five guys have come. Sister, calm down. Could there be that there's something you are... No, no, no. There's nothing wrong with me. I just happen to have bad luck with stupid guys. Five of them stupid that means something in you is attracting them because you draw your kind to yourself the body of christ likes passing blames we blame witches we blame pastors we blame government we blame our parents let me tell you your miracle starts the day you get a chair or go behind one tree and sit down. i'm surprised seeing many gentlemen their lives are not moving they are not doing anything 
After Koinonia, you are just looking at any sister. Who can I now marry you? This one, that time is going. And there's nothing happening. You see what we are saying? A gentleman who will go and sit down with a Bible and your Bible and a tape recorder. Jakatokata. Lord, it can't be this way. The word of God is coming every day. Why is my life like this? I am 31. I am 35. I am 40. I'm seated. I, can, I have to beg for Gary. Lord, I love you. Something is wrong. And all of a sudden, you come there. Your friend is calling. Say, leave me alone. No, you better leave me alone. Say, is, is your, did you renew your DSTV? Say, don't near my house. You have been deceiving me for many years. And you sit down and all of a sudden the word of the lord comes this sitting down is what we don't do we stand up moving around this hustling life pillar to post one thing is needful sit down first stand up as instructed don't move around just like that it, it see the labor of the fool the engaging of a fool weary at every one of them because he doesn't know the road to the city not every action is profitable it is the action that is done in obedience and through understanding apostle i'm anointed i'm surprised i organize a meeting and nobody comes there is something you need to know more about the anointing it's more than laying hands apostle people come to my church they receive miracles and go back that means there is something you need to know about leadership you have done well knowing about miracles but there is something you do not know about leadership please blast in tongues for one minute and say lord i'm tired of this level i'm tired of this level i'm tired of this level i'm tired of this dimension i'm tired of this face lift your voice and pray Lord, I know you are ever faithful. Pray. I take responsibility tonight. There is something I am not engaging adequately. Hallelujah. Please sit down. The Lord has brought before us several keys, mysteries, secrets that are responsible for certain outcomes. Brothers and sisters, it's up to us. There are lazy people waiting for others to enjoy, to engage it, then they enjoy the benefit. You cannot sit down and be dependent forever. Our little children should be the ones waiting. But an adult, oh, you know that thing they say in house, Ale Baka Musamu. So while you are engaging, I'm resting. After all, you'll be too kind to leave me like that. Nah. The Bible says, right from the days of John the Baptist, even until now, the kingdom suffered violence. And the violent would take it by force. Someone who will say, No way, Lord, I will force what is my portion from the realm of the spirit life does not deliver anything to careless less as fair if it happens it happens no everybody who receives anything worthwhile are those who stand in life and force their own force it down this passive i'm no one day things will happen we are not angry enough that's why we have not broken the back of certain things in our life We are learning. I've shared with you. There are some of us, the reason why we are not getting results in our lives is because we ignore God. I've shared these principles. You don't ignore God and prosper, sir. 
okay um i'm a businessman me i'm not into ministry ignore god and see ignore god and watch the devil rubbish your life many business people don't honor god they honor business they honor men but they don't honor god in all thy ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your path how many people start walking and they they don't have time for god time for the house of god no time for the things of god i'm a bit busy lord you know that i'm i'm engaged and god says hey you are engaged and then the devil comes to rubbish your life and your work one sickness arises and just destroys you somebody in your office looks at you and says let me see how you will rise to the next level and that's it is they that know their god that shall be strong and do exploits to the fierceness in today's world does not require guessing about god you must know god hallelujah i've said it humorously only god can tell the number of charms and shrines and herbal places that have my names on their altars only god knows the people who project me as i sleep to make sure i don't wake up this man you see is here for a long time very long time is that true yes some of us have refused we have been drumming mental development and we have refused so we are mediocre where we are it's amazing how when the word of god comes people exempt themselves say this part is not for me this is the part for me no all scripture was inspired how many all scripture god can be talking about mental development and you can say me for me i'm a man of prayer and fasting leave that one for um, um mental development all those who want to become professors and lecturers for me this is a vineyard and you are there and you find out that because your mindset is thinking wrong regardless of your results L listen being around the truth and not engaging it can destroy you because it will bring about familiarity you are familiar with every man of god every program everything yet it will not bless you those that were close to jesus ran away they were not getting anything nicodemus came and met him once in the night and received something that changed his life mental development mental development upgrading your mind expanding your capacity to be relevant in today's world and grants you the opportunity to glorify christ how about people who do not understand authority this is the mystery they have not engaged and that's why the devil whips them left right and center left right and center they have no honor no regard for anybody on earth some of our parents are like that like that just say, hey, so so man has come to town which man so why are people going to go and see him what's the spell you see you see and, and they start debating it and the person debating is poor and broke and sick and suffering he does not know that it is for this cause many are weak many are sick and many do sleep he sits down there and a miracle is close to him sometimes in his neighborhood and he hears reinhard bonke preaching and laughs he said ah is that the wise man you are talking about what is this one he says they said baba is about to pray for the city well, no, no, mind those people and his kind of case is what is being called and they are being healed and reinhard bonke will go back and the proud man who does not understand authority sits down there look the way we have cheated ourselves because of ignorance of the systems of god cheap victories that have been complicated through ignorance look at students here you heard the testimony of one of our ladies last week no school fees no nothing and the result comes out and you are graduated Haba. <laughs> 
There are some of us where our lives are the way it is because there is no excellence to anything we do. We are born again, but everything is mediocre. Everything. Everything. Average mediocre. Local champions. I'm a tailor. Like who? Well, I'm, I'm here. I'm patching here and there. I, Lord, I need increase. And God says, increase your capacity. Be excellent. Be excellent. So that you can now start making clothes. When you make a millionaire's clothes, you get a millionaire's reward. When you make clothes for somebody who gives you 500 today, 200 tomorrow, 800 today to pay 3,000. And you are arguing and, see, arguing and arguing and fight and forgive the person. But you still suffer. You get tired and say, Lord, I've started. I've left this level. I've challenged us towards being excellent. Hallelujah. Excellent. Some of us, relationships. This is the mystery we are not engaging. We know it, but we are not engaging it. Hallelujah. Relationships. Honorable is here. Um, I, I don't mean to embarrass him, but this man of God that you see, forget that he's a politician. I told you politicians are my friends. I'm intentionally friends with politicians because whoever controls power controls what happens. I'm not one of these, these foolish people that throw away politicians away. They are my friends. They are my friends. They are my friends. Yes. They are my friends. Hallelujah. Jezebel wanted to destroy the people in the land of Elijah. The first thing she did was to marry the king. To make sure she was at the seat of governance. Then she now pushed Ahab and said, oh yeah, wait, I'm the one in charge. See that? A true apostolic grace must be able to minister the life and the power of God even at the level of governance. I went for movie crusade and honorable is here do you know brothers and sisters this man as great as he is with his status and all of this he came for the crusade with his wife stayed like two days together and returned back when I go to Yola sometimes with his own car carries me in his own Jeep and drives around praise the Lord relationship if he calls me and says his wife is having a headache, and you call me. <laughs> there, there were calls. But let me show you how I will respond. Relationship. That's what brought Dorcas back to life. When Dorcas died, she was a woman who, well, she said, I can't preach, but I can sew. Madam, you are cold. Let me make sweater for you. When she died, the widow said, no way. These wicked men, they are all preachers, but they don't take care of us. You better raise this woman back to life for our sake. Hallelujah. Tomorrow, if he becomes a governor, I'm still his friend. Is that true? Yes. Access. That's why when he comes like this, we honor him. What is all this? Everybody is equal before God. It is true based on your understanding. System that we do not know that destroys us and rubbishes our lives because we do not know. Are we together? Yes. Relationships. I told you the easiest way to rise in life is relationships. Everything money can pay for, relationships can pay for it. If you use money to pay for everything in life, you are not wise. There are things relationships should pay for. You can't pay for the house, but a relationship can give it to you. I, I spent time um, the week before last to talk extensively on relationships. I'm not going to go back, but please listen to that message. I can spend my time talking to you about relationship. That's what happened. John the Baptist had the privilege. His mother, listen, John the Baptist did not study what happened around his birth. When Mary received the prophecy of the angel, 
She knew it was a strange thing. She had to search for another woman who had a strange experience like her to be able to relate with her. And she found out she had the gist of Elizabeth and how John came. And when they met, their baby slept. When John was born, he was older than Jesus, six months of course, at the wilderness there. When he met Jesus for a while, he was walking with Jesus, but offense came in. Because some of Jesus' disciples left and became his disciple. And he left and then he now went trying to look for relevance. He went and started lambasting Herod because he did not know the protocol of the palace. He thought that the palace is the same thing as the wilderness. The way you speak in the wilderness is not how you speak in the palace. There are principles, all preachers, that rubbish themselves in high places and they call it speaking for Christ. There is the wisdom and intelligence. When Paul was in the Jerusalem council with the Sanhedrin, he spoke as a Pharisee. He said, look, 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 look. I can speak as this and that, but look, now, there are Pharisees, Sadducees. Let me bring a point of divide. I'm speaking based on my authority. I'm a Pharisee. Spoke about the resurrection and that place caught fire. Relationships. Many of our parents today know too many people to be looking for house at their age. Is that true? They didn't raise anybody. They didn't lift anybody. All their friends are successful people. They watch television and tell you this guy was my friend. Do you know that uh, General Buhari was my classmate? Do you know this one was my classmate? Do you know that Kofi Annan, we drank tea together? Oh God, why have you not been there? What has that relationship done for you? This is why when we do things in church like turn to one another and give them a nice hug and you are frowning. The, this investment you are making now of rejecting people will be waiting for you in the future. You will see the person you frowned at in power and glory and now you will not have the same access again. It is cheaper now than later. You've heard me say we will all be great. But the greater part is that we will all know ourselves. That's the most important part. So that what I do not have a Jimmy can give me at a platter of gold. Hardship. Because there is no relationship. Hardship. Because there is no relationship. As a ministry by the grace of God, God has helped us to enjoy certain privileges with people, with institutions, because of relationships what have you refused to engage that is punishing you and is destroying you what have you refused what do you know and have been wishing will work for you but you have not engaged it truly hallelujah it's one of the things I respect a lot about my dad. My dad understands relationships in a strange way. He knows almost anybody everywhere. If he's a policeman, he will scroll down. There has to be one policeman he gave bag of rice some years before. If it is prisons, if it is customs, if he's a carpenter, even if it's a truck he does not have that stops. He knows a mechanic somewhere. He knows the one that fixes Peugeot. He knows the one that fixes these relationships. Now, it's costly. That's a very busy life. But it's only busy until the day you need those people. One call. And they tell someone else, yes, sir. But another, you keep knocking forever. And you say, God, help me. God, I helped you since. You misuse the opportunity. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. What have you been paying for that relationships would have paid if you engage them? How long will you continue hating people and talking about them as though you are going to live in this world alone? How long are you ready to continue holding grudges? When will you forbear and excel? There are ladies over my dead body, my mother, I will never talk to her. But the blessing in your destiny is in the mouth of that woman. Justified she did something wrong. But can you ignore everything so that you step into another dimension? Hallelujah. 
I am passionate about engaging the word. I am passionate. I studied the life of Job because I want to be very prosperous. And I studied his life. I saw things that Job did. That if Job died poor, God would have been a wicked person. I found treasures. I said, ah, this is what Job did. Not the obvious things we see. There were things that Job did. What are you doing? Some of us, these are little children. They never look at you and smile. They look at you and they are afraid. You call them children. Remember, you are not going to die young. You have received the anointing for long life. The children you laugh at today, you are only 10 years older than them or 20 years or 30 years. They will soon grow and become adults too and occupy positions of influence. And you will see that a mistake you did 30 years ago will haunt you and your children and children's children. Is God giving us wisdom? These, these are the systems that we, these are these are these are success systems. These are success systems. I'm I'm challenging us. This engaging part is what came in my spirit today to talk to us about. Engage the word. Engage the word. Engage the mysteries you know and stay there. Stay there till it produces. Don't engage once and complain. Do you know there was a time in my life I did everything but there was no result? Everything to be done, I cross-checked and it was correct. Once you have done everything, leave God's part to him. So when people are complaining and say, Apostle, what am I missing? I say, you are not missing anything. Just stay there. Just like that? Yes, sir. Stay there. God is watching your growth. And he knows that if those blessings come, you don't have the spiritual capacity to take it yet. So he keeps you. And then overnight, you wake up and step into a dramatic dimension of the anointing. And they say, where did he come from? He's always been there waiting. I've been sowing seeds. Continue. Says not to be weary in well-doing. For we will reap in due season. There is a due season if you fail not. If you fail, the due season will come and pass. And you will not see anything. I will never stop sowing seeds. I will sow like a madman until the day the harvest comes. I will never stop engaging my passion for God. I will never stop building capacity. I will respect every man of God and every authority that is producing the results that I'm not producing. Never will I open my mouth to talk about somebody who is producing results that I'm not producing. It's pride of the highest order no matter how simple and how cheap they sound they are engaging something that is producing my results i have a meeting next year and god has granted me the privilege and i'll have the privilege to be meeting with i think maybe for the first time in my life one of the billionaires in the world in Nigerian I look forward to that meeting I'm preparing for it like I'm writing jam he said ah, ah, apostle for what this dishonor we carry is why we never rise if I sit down with a billionaire and he talks to me for five minutes I will go down my knees and say thank you sir because it would change my ignorant mind for God's sake and deliver me from the things that have pegged me and my lineage at certain levels i look forward to that meeting i've been praying and fasting about it i say lord this meeting cannot be once we have to be friends we have to be what yes because a friend sticks close to, than a brother this brother sister thing friends Hallelujah. I know we think it doesn't matter what I just said. Look at our lives. Look at our families. Have you not seen the rules we have broken for ages? God is faithful. Our lack of understanding his system is what is punishing us. Apostle, why are you teaching all this so you can serve God? Let my people release them from this pain so that they will go and serve me. 
I want they are for as long as they are working in the farms, for as long as they are suffering in Egypt, they can't serve me. Say, let my people go so that they will do what it is my desire to see some of our brothers a few years from now. That when others get up in the morning and are running helter skelter, you are there with your family. You made a way. That's the worship song playing. When our backs were against the wall and it looked as if it was over, you made a way. And visitors come to your house discussing survival and you are discussing kingdom. We have allocated 10 million to this ministry. There is a mission agency. We heard that these people are passionate about souls. And they say, are you a pastor? He said, no, I'm just a brother in church. I have been trained that my entire life is about a, the kingdom. He said, are you, you, you better stand up and make ends meet. And Luther continue. I said, no, not in this house. We have demarcated this house through understanding. Exempted forever from certain things. Someone comes to your house and says, what's that noise I'm hearing? Say, we have a vigil today. Say, ah, which prophet is coming? Say, no. Priesthood. Our house. We have vigils. Say, are you not aware that uh, you have to rush? Say, no, 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 no. God is faithful. God is faithful. And you are praying. And they say, what are you praying for? Souls. Say, ah, what about, uh, what about ends to meet? Say, ah, God, God, as we settled that long ago. This is, in this house, it is kingdom. Do you think this is possible, what I'm saying? You better believe it. Otherwise, you will be another angry person. This is what I want my life to be all about. Let no one deceive you that your whole life should be spent looking for money. Then serving God small on the way. It's a cost. Did you hear what I said? It's a cost. You can live a happy life where you sit down and teach your children by yourself because you have time. Junior, come. Daddy is about to teach you how to tithe. Have your envelope. Have your own. You put your own one million dollars. The young boy puts his own hundred dollars there. He's learning how to tithe. Daddy, what do we do with this? Son, this is called the law of open heaven. Say after me. And he murmurs whatever he says, but he's learning. By the time that child is 10, he's a millionaire by himself without your influence. And one day he says, Daddy, I was sleeping and I had a voice. And the Lord told me to donate half of my wealth to a mission agency. He says, son, do it fast. Because his father has understanding. Do it fast. Daddy, I thought I was going to become a doctor. But I had a voice in the night saying I'll be a great man of God. Don't worry, you are covered. Not this morning ceremony. Says, so you are going to the vineyard now. Who is the sponsor? No, that's, that's the mindset they carry about preachers. The moment you say you are preaching, people just look at you and they, they have a valedictory service for you into a life of pain. No, sir. Hallelujah. One day you get up and carry your family. Where are you going to? We are going for a Hillsong conference in Australia. You mean it? Yes. Yes, sir. We are going there and we are sitting down. He said, you mean this is how your whole life? He said, this is how it is, so." I don't know about you i so thank god i'm a man because you can design the life the way ladies don't feel bad just just pray that's that's it i will never spend my life bowing to the statue of nebuchadnezzar no sir no sir hmm. how can i call on your name and end up in shame no way no way how can i bow down before you and then bow down before a man no way because you are my god Men may not believe it. They think we are jokers. But you are my God. You are, you are, you are, you are. You are my God.
Romans chapter 8 and verse 18 let me round up it says for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time brothers and sisters I am not unaware of the pain you are going through I'm not a fool I know that there are constraints there are pains that you are going through but my Bible greater than any constitution of any republic the Bible says for I know I reckon that the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory doxa that shall be revealed the weightiness of God in us in us the Bible says for the earnest expectation of your family of your lineage not just of creation listen some of you are listening to me and the devil is telling you don't mind that man it has never been done in your lineage go and study it and God says you are the one I'm raising on. I'm raising you to make a spectacle to principalities and powers that causes can be subdued that yokes can be broken listen God is looking for men that he's looking for a generation he said this is the generation that seeks thee let me tell you there is a generation that will seek God as a vocation not now there are individuals there are churches but there will come a generation an age range where what they do is to seek God church services every day every day not just on Sunday as one convention is finishing another one is starting and you can attend it because you have conquered the forces that keep men busy bowing down to the status of Nebuchadnezzar what to eat what to wear that's what drives people to walk in the morning you are supposed to walk but the purpose is not just make your ends meet it's a revelation of the glory of the father disabuse your thinking from this servitude mentality God wants to raise us but it will happen by engaging his systems lift your voice and begin to pray Lord I exempt myself I exempt myself Shaka -taka -taka -ta. I exempt myself I exempt myself I exempt myself through knowledge shall the just be delivered there is a generation that will serve God there is a generation that will seek the God of Jacob not seeking money not seeking power we will conquer wealth we will conquer all the things that distract men so that the only time that will be left is in advancing the course of the kingdom and improving the living of men pray listen i look forward to times where our doctors will set up hospitals that are 10 times the size of shika and everybody who comes half the price was already covered by a kingdom financier yes sir for a hospital not a church not a church you meet someone and there is a surgery happening that person is about dying because they don't have money here comes a kingdom financier what did you say is happening i love god and i love his creation too much please treat the person listen let me tell you this please don't ever think i'm just making noise this is prophecy it will happen you 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 may throw yourself out but it will happen hallelujah a time in the history of the church where there are men who walk to reveal the glory of god they are so blessed they don't discuss money again hallelujah i heard about the net worth of one very funny person like that and the thing pained me because i read an article about a church that was building their cathedral and the amount was so meager 
they borrowed loan from a bank and the bank was harassing them harassing the pastor they wrote all kinds of things and insulted the man and they said the man plunged into depression and died i think it was last week or week before last when i had that thing it pained me i said in the vision god showed this guy death was not part of it all it was something that killed this man yet there is someone answering the kingdom of darkness and has more than hundred times what that church is praying for please don't tell me that is the will of god get up in the morning you are doing this job today you are doing this one tomorrow god calls you say sorry god i have to pay my child school fees no sir some of our parents may not have gotten it right we don't have to mock them but you have to stand and say lord for the sake of my children i will pay this price lift your voice and pray lord i pay the price if my father if my mother knew better they would do better but now that i know this oh god i will pay the price i will pay the price lift your voice i will pay the price no joking with my life i will pay the price i will pay the price lift your voice and pray engaging the systems of the kingdom not only believing them not only having access to them hallelujah hallelujah i like you to lift your voice and cry that the spirit of disobedience the spirit of spiritual laziness that does not allow you engage the word you just keep wishing no no sir no ma lift your voice and pray lord the grace to put the word to work lord i confess i've not been a faithful title pray i i stop playing games with my destiny tonight lord i confess my prayer life has gone down my word life has gone down lord i confess i'm not serious with my destiny as a gentleman god has called me into ministry but i'm not giving it the attention it requires they're admiring people fighting people gossiping and trying to make a name for myself i settle down with destiny 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 hallelujah listen let me give you a little assignment when you go back home tonight i want you to write specific goals things you are doing this issue of doing everything mm -mm. i'm on a mission to rising financially i'm on a mission to knowing god i'm on a mission to accessing the healing anointing don't just study randomly and move. no write things the lord is calling me into ministry and he told me the ministry is starting february next year but from now till february i am engaging this i need to know the mystery behind speed i need to know what keeps members you write it and sit down i've, I've not been faithful in tithing that means i've not had a revelation about it the issue is not just to carry money and start running the issue is to sit down and say this month i'm going to take a course i'm going to take a study on it who has written books in this area and you sit down who has done a very comprehensive balanced not hungry manipulative teaching on it and you study that's how you grow you carry your issue of concern put it before you close your eyes to every other thing until that mountain crumbles don't leave it that's how winners work but all this one of try today if it's too hard you turn this direction you will still meet it there stay there and win did you hear what i said stay there and win let me tell you in my little life i can tell you there is no mountain that is not surmountable it's a lie don't listen to anybody that talks to you like that is not your friend don't go near them again i want you to write a list of the mountains before you pray dance but sit down there's got to be a way there's got to be a way you read a book you check something there's got to be a way then you enjoy the beauty of triumph 
brothers and sisters triumph is sweet when you conquer your challenges you live as if satan does not exist there is such a realm it is my desire with all my heart among other things that god will bring not just this ministry he has helped in a measure not just me but every one of us not just to a level of spiritual awakening i i'm trusting god for an avalanche of do you know how you conquer poverty like you put it under your feet this is what god would do in this ministry and with people and you watch people serve god all this obsession for money that runs people to hell ladies marrying for money brothers doing this people leaving god for money all kinds of nonsense and we can focus on god then there will be prayer altars afresh that seek god for him not for what he can bring there will be men and women who can study there are some of you there are books locked up in your spirit for nations but suffering will not let those books come out because all you are thinking now is oh god let me just look for something to eat we depress ourselves and have high blood pressure to death whereas there is a way a noble way where you spend your life at the end of your life like david you say like like um paul you say i have fought the fight good fight i have finished my course you have poured yourself like a drink offering nothing left again a woman called me one time she had this son whether he joined friends or so and went somewhere i don't know what he went to go and do this young boy and maybe about 10 or 11 started hearing voices physical voices like word of knowledge sometimes they can tell him kill yourself or pour hot water you know you you know that is of the devil when the instruction does not carry the life of god god will never ask you to pour hot water on your body how does it glorify jesus the testimony of jesus is the spirit of prophecy and this boy continued to do all these kinds of things and i told her, i said mama thank god you brought this boy this boy would die for nothing one day hell is rearming itself to make sure there is an onslaught an assault against the body of christ and many times we are just crossing our legs listen i need you to know i've taught you about warfare we teach warfare correctly we are not people who fight from a standpoint of foolishness we are standing from a standpoint of victory but that establishment you must do it otherwise victory will not be automatic Hebrews chapter 2 it says but we do not yet see all things under his feet please let me say this respectfully be careful who you listen to and be careful the content of the spiritual information you are giving just because people are sincere may not mean their communications are balanced and accurate listen to what i'm telling you many people have become casualties of imbalanced spiritual communications Jesus told us everywhere in his crusade demons came they were not afraid of Jesus' own crusade demons they followed people they didn't wait outside and enter later on they came imagine Jesus in a crusade praise the Lord the people shouted hallelujah and the demons were still in them and they did not go when the world is not engaged it does not have any power to do anything a spirit can sit down the same way some of you are sitting quietly now as sincere and innocent as you are in the next few minutes you'll be surprised what will be happening in your own life and then you will see doors that have been closed opening like this then you will know that these doors were not closed by mistake and will not be opened by mistake everything good comes to everybody except you the moment is your turn something terrible happens a gentleman just sees you and say beautiful lady can i go and see your parents and that's the end of it his business goes down his life goes down everything crashes until he leaves you then he goes back up do you believe what i'm teaching you So while it is true that it's the Holy Spirit that ultimately creates conviction, 
the manifestation of the miraculous in our lives and in the church you know when i came down you need to see the multitudes of people outside there are people sitting on the soccer way here my brothers and my sisters listen you went to school do you think human beings are stupid do you think someone will transport himself from another nation or another state some of you have not eaten since you came you came straight to sit down is god so wicked to sit down and allow you carry your trouble and go back Oh, not koinonia i welcome you to a place where god has given us the keys to deal with everything that is not of god i saw so many people standing outside the overflow by the roadside and compassion just gripped my heart i said imagine if i were one of these people and they were happily standing they were not complaining they just knew that if I may but touch the hem of his garment. My brothers and my sisters, let me tell you. Forgive me if it sounds proud, but God has given us something. Let me tell you sincerely. We, we make bold and we ask the world to come and receive because he has given us something. I told you last week, you only knock a door that you don't have the key. When you have a key, you don't, you stop knocking, you open that's the same way your destiny will be open the Lord declared prophetically that this is a year of extraordinary fruitfulness so in a meeting like this if I were you my heart is stayed on that word listen let me tell you please listen you see me teaching passionately we are going to pray when I teach like this huh? I don't teach as a preacher I come with my heart full of a burden are you getting what I'm saying? I come sincerely with my heart full of a burden because I love God, but I love his people too. My greatest satisfaction is not my personal progress. It's seeing the hand of God made manifest in your life. When instructions are given, when these spiritual things are given, you must open your heart to believe them you see the the gospel works with the simplicity of childlike faith sometimes many of us carry this trado african pride and that's what stops us from receiving god wants to step in and touch you and you are wondering will god really touch me you know my peculiar problem you know the name abba are you the first to be in trouble God knows how to deliver the righteous from trouble. Let me tell you this. I don't care what the situation is, but I want us to agree that this God of heaven, uh, the king of the universe, that he will arise for you tonight. You see, let me tell you this. My prayer this year, when I was fasting and praying this year, I prayed a prayer. I said, Lord, some people don't know what a testimony is. Give them one. They only know how other people's testimonies. The Lord did this for this, but they have never had a testimony themselves. The day you have a real testimony yourself, it will humble you. You wouldn't know whether to stand or to kneel down. That's what I'm praying for you for today. A testimony. testimony when the hand of God comes in a meeting and upon a man you see let me tell you this the supernatural is not just falling down and roll you can fall down and roll from left to right and stand up and go back and not testify the proof that God came is the testimony that follows the testimony the testimony of Jesus the testimony of Jesus apostle i came here barring march miracle service by april miracle service i'm one month pregnant that's a testimony listen come david down when the devil oppresses your life destroys everything about you he uses men as a canvas to write a letter to god that your dominion and your royalty is still being contested with oppression is a letter sent through men to God the highest of God's creation the devil writes upon your life I will destroy the family and I will make sure everyone begs like you send a, um, a chat send 
and then a miracle is God's reply that God rides through you and says in spite of this I am still on the throne it's true I believe in miracles I honestly and truthfully believe in miracles I believe in principles I believe in mysteries but I believe in divine intervention my brothers and my sisters God can shorten a man's journey what then is the excellency of his mercy listen God is a God of process I agree listen carefully God is a God of principles I agree he will not excuse laziness and he will not excuse spiritual laxity but let me tell you when blind Bartimeo said thou son of David have mercy on me the mercy of God can shorten the journey of a man if you get born again at age 40 do you know how long it takes to know God genuinely know God you don't read your Bible in two months and know God but there's something the Spirit of God can do and give you a solid encounter that in six months you have caught up with the spiritual level of more than five years how about restoration your parents started building from 1999 till today it has stopped at Lintel level right there you went to school and said i'm going to pay it and finish everything the day you said you pay it you almost died i made a vow with my life that i will believe this word and i will engage it life is too risky to be careless with spiritual laws engage it don't wait until the devil kills your life and your children before you know many believers learn too late let me say this and thank god for his mercy you will receive but do you know there are some of you the lord spoke to you about coming here since last year you've been arguing and giving reasons and excuses your situation would not have been that bad but thank God because although Lazarus was three days dead, Jesus is still the resurrection and the life. Not only the healer. When I prayed, I told the Lord, I said, please Lord, give people a testimony. Real testimonies. I was blind. Now I see. God did something in three weeks to my finances. Everybody see what God can do. God transformed my family. God turned me around and did something for me. I don't doubt your love for God, but there must be proofs of that love. There must be proofs of that love. Somebody shout, Lord, give me an evidence. Say, Lord, give me an evidence. I believe in proofs John chapter 4 and verse 48 I'll begin to pray shortly bless you 4 verse 48 he says and Jesus said unto him who was speaking here Jesus except ye see signs and wonders ye will not believe how true how true that there are so many people in your family until they see what the power of God does in your life they will never believe your God they think God is one of those things this is a charm this is this this is that and then God is one of them but the day like Dagon all those gods fall before the Almighty God and you return back with a solid evidence let me tell you that day like Pharaoh your loved ones who confess that this your God is God Are we together so I want you to be serious don't sit down and just look around and say ah, who is going to receive let me clap for him no it's an insistence it's a desperation except you see miraculous signs you shall not believe Luke chapter 5 we we'll read the first 11 verses that miracles can help to create solid convictions Charles and Francis Hunter powerful evangelists they've gone to be with the Lord now they wrote a book that a miracle is worth a thousand words I believe them I believe them 
the world is tired of our noise and our stories they want to see a demonstration and a manifestation of the reality of the life and the power of God. It says, and it came to pass as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God. He stood by the lake of Gennesaret. Next verse, please. And saw two sheep standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. Uh -huh. We're reading to 11. And he entered into one of the sheep, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the sheep. Next verse. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let your nets for a drought. Five what happened Simon answering said master we have toiled all night in other words he said lord look you are not the first to pray for me a man of god prayed for me in zaria another man prayed in wherever you know so god is one of those things you bless me oh yeah do it master we have toiled all night not for a few hours all night night vigil looking for a fish and did not catch even one it says nevertheless at thy word i will let down the net six and when they had this done they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their seven and they beckoned unto their partners which were in the other ship that they should come and help them and they came and filled both ships miracles can create relationships that you get a miracle and partners that were minding their business you can say come and join me who will not follow someone with results who will not let me tell you the bible talks about a wealthy man and um, how did he put it now a poor man that we even with much entreaties they will run away from him there are many people that come from where we come from and will pass us as if they don't know us because you represent shame and anything that looks like Ichabod, the departure of the glory, men will usually find a way to excuse it from. Ah, but the Bible says you will be called Beulah and Hephzibah, a delight. And they came and filled both ships so that they began to sing. Verse 8 when simon peter saw this look at this this is what miracles do he fell down at jesus's knees saying depart from me i'm a sinful man was a sermon preached a serious miracle happened and that miracle created conviction the same way some of you have been laughing at men of god sincerely and laughing at everything that has to do with the power of god and by the time we'll be sharing the grace tonight you will stand and go back quietly not talking to anybody and say i've seen today i heard with my ears like job but i've seen with my eyes that god is real and his power is real his grace is real nine for he was this is what led to the repentance he was so men can be astonished to repentance that they look at your life and say promise when did this happen when did god lift you was it not last year together we were discussing and you tell him there is a name god is called though, the lifter of men the lifter of men let me tell you my brothers and my sisters run away from anybody who tell you results don't matter they do they do out of the abundance of the evidence of the workings of god in your life the nations will bow to your god they will never bow to you just because you are talking man of god hear me no results you have mp pews there's there's no way around it there must be an evidence a serious evidence when john questioned the messiahship of jesus he didn't answer with a statement he said go and tell john what you have seen the blind see the deaf hear the dead are raised and the gospel is preached to the meek and then he says blessed is he that is not offended so the moment there are no miracles the messiahship of the christ is questioned john himself the one who ordained jesus said go and ask him is he the messiah Miracles confirm that Jesus is the Messiah. God is not a herbalist. 
he's not a herbalist that is ahead of other herbalists no wherefore god had so highly exalted him and given him a name there are people who have names politicians have names businessmen have names. captains of industry gatekeepers of mountains have names but my brothers and my sisters there is a name it says there is no other name under heaven given to man by which we must be saved and it's in that name tonight that we will wreak havoc in the kingdom of darkness the miraculous manifests the glory of god and causes people to not only believe god but to trust god john chapter 2 and verse 11 the first miracle of jesus what we call the miracle at the wedding of the Cana of galilee he turned water to wine the bible says this beginning of miracles this beginning of not this beginning of sermons not this beginning of discussions this beginning of miracles did jesus in cana of galilee and manifested forth his glory and the disciples believed on him believed on him we believe in the god that heals and saves and delivers that's why we kept the seats for you that's why we we knew you would come because the hand of God will bring you and we knew you would not be disappointed brothers and sisters there is a God in heaven God is not a herbalist don't let your pain demean him he is still the king of the universe the whole world lieth in wickedness Acts chapter 10 and verse 38 how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the holy ghost and with power and he went about doing good it takes the manifestation of the power of god to do good and healing all they that were oppressed of the devil for god was with him for god was with him for god was with him We're going to pray. You have to convince yourself. It's going to be a quick walk. And we're going to cry to God and say, Lord, whatever I carried from my house, whatever I carried from my place of work that I've brought before you, it should not return back with me. It should be clear and evident that I met the Lord Jesus Christ. It should be clear and evident right where you are sitting you will soon stand up but right where you are sitting i'd like you to talk to the lord please be serious and be desperate lord i have come to you i've come to you i've come to you i've come to you my life must be changed my finances must be changed my destiny must be changed lord i've come to you as a pastor i've come to you as a prophet as an apostle there has to be greater oil upon my life lord i hear you are a restorer restore me online please make sure you are praying those outside make sure you are praying there is a god that answers prayer when the lord turned again the captivity of zion it says we were like them that dream and our mouths were filled with laughter and said they among the hidden the lord had done great things for them it says the lord had done great things for us whereof we are glad turn again our captivity like the streams of the negev turn again our captivity there is a god that can turn around the captivity of men
Abarada Balakatos. Pray. Doesn't matter where you are seated, doesn't matter where you are connecting from. The power of God is able to save to the uttermost. Shalabaradakatos. Father, I'm praying that infirmity in my body must leave this night. That financial situation must die this night. That oppression that has kept my family down. Did the Bible not say this is a victory that overcometh the world, even our faith? A miracle worker, God is a glorious God, God is a miracle worker, God is a glorious shortly and I'll begin to minister by the Spirit your own assignment is to receive you have come let me tell you something there is enough grace to solve whatever challenge it is that has plagued you yours is to believe in the power of God it says if you will believe you will see the glory of God if you will believe you will see the glory of God if you will believe you will see the glory of God. If you will believe, you will see the glory of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. A lady, the power of God is going to come upon a lady outside. Please carry her and bring her now. There is a lady I'm seeing. I just saw light from in here. Write the power of God upon that lady. Please bring her. Please bring her. And then bring the someone on this row. I'm seeing like, like a smoke just going round. And it's like it's locating someone. The power of God is going to come on someone. Please pick the person and bring the person out. You reign. You reign. Hello.
a lady from outside. I cross the hand of captivity over your life in the name of Jesus Christ. I cross the hand of captivity over your family in the name of Jesus. I saw a lot of oppression over the life of this lady and in the name of Jesus we silence the voice of wickedness. We silence the voice of wickedness. Hold on please. The Lord is showing me something right now. I saw this while I ministered in Abel Kuta. I started seeing snakes on the ground. Snakes on the ground. And that's what I'm seeing right now. And this is, this is the manifestation of a spirit. And there are many families that are under this yoke. Whether you believe it or not, just let me minister to you. I'm declaring right now, the power of God is going to start coming on people that represent those families. Bring them out. You are not shouting anything. You are not saying anything. Bring them out. I'm speaking by the Spirit. The Word of God has been declared. There are families. I'm seeing serpents, snakes, snakes, inside and outside. Bring them. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. And the captives of the mighty by the fire of the Holy Spirit, I judge those spirits wherever you are, represented in anyone here, represented in anyone here, I speak by the hand of God. You reign, you reign, hello, bring them out. I'm still on that case. The power of God is still locating people. I'm seeing snakes. Jesus I'm still praying we are not doing too many things tonight we are going to the root of many people's challenges I'm saying it again there are still spirits and I speak by the anointing of the spirit of God wherever they are overflow one two three across the road I'm declaring judgment judgment upon those spirits the fire of God is coming upon you right now whether you are standing for yourself or for your family, bring them out. There is no escape for when his voice comes, they come out from their hiding place. Hallelujah. Now listen, there are people, I'm seeing something that looks like a knife being inserted in people and I'm seeing people beginning to run, just run. When you see people doing that, hold them and bring them. The Lord is bringing deliverance. That one is not speed. This one is not the prayer for speed. I'm just telling you as the Lord is showing me. Right now I decree and declare. I don't know those that the Lord is cutting them free from every kind of diabolism. But I stretch my hands by the Spirit. I command judgment on every force. Judgment on every power. In the name of Jesus Christ. The hand of God is coming upon them. You will begin to see them run around. Just running. It's, it's, it's not a, a making of their own. It's by the power of the Holy Ghost. Bring them out.
instruction right now. Now we are ready to shout. Listen. The Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing what looks like a grave. And the Lord is saying he's delivering families from the power of the grave. In the name of Jesus Christ and at the count of three, any family whether territorially or by whatever connection is tied to the spirit of the grave. I'm declaring at the count of three as you shout Jesus the power of God is setting you free one two three the spirit of the grave the spirit of the grave the spirit of the grave I cost you by the God of heaven the spirit of the grave I cost you by the God of heaven Just follow me this night. Now, I'm praying for all those in front. They came out because the Lord showed something. I declare by the power of God that the legal access of darkness over your life is broken and at the count of three, I speak to these spirits. Release everything you have taken from these families. One, two, go, go, go. Out of their lives, out of their destinies, out of their lives out of their destinies I command a release I command a release I command a release release breakthroughs release open doors hallelujah we are going to pray please just pay attention and let God help you. You came here tonight to receive. Listen to me. The Lord is ministering to me that there are people you dare not go to bed. Someone must come in your sleep and try to sleep with you. Or it may happen once in a while. This is a strange oppression of darkness. And I declare, I'm praying right now. I'm seeing fire all over this place because there are many people that is the root cause of many oppressions in your life. At the count of three, you will shout that name again. That is above every other name. And some of you will feel something leaving you immediately. I declare that all these spirits that molest the saints and manipulate dreams and visions. At the count of three, let there be emancipation. One, two, get ready. Three. I command those spirits, go now. Strangers of the night. Strangers of the night. Kebrakatakata. Rekatakata. Help that gentleman. Strangers of the night. Reketepe rekata. Embreketeteketekete. Bring them out. Strangers of the night. I curse you by the God of heaven. Molesting the saints. Planting sicknesses in their bodies. Hello, Kim Madonna. Hello, Hello, Kim Madonna. a certain family here 
I'm saying that they tied the family to the covenant of a stone. Something that has to do with a stone. I don't know what that means and in what tribe. But I'm seeing a covenant that has to do with being tied to a stone. I don't know if it's for protection or for whatever. But in the name of Jesus, I'm praying right now. By the power of the Holy Spirit. That any fraternity with the elements of Christ. Let it be broken now in the name of Jesus. Help them please. Let it be broken now in the name of Jesus. Fraternities with stones and elements and strange fires of the night. Be free in the name of Jesus. Be free in the name of Jesus. The mysteries behind the strange hardship of people. The mysteries behind the oppression of people. Oppression of families. Doors. Doors are opening. That's what I'm seeing in the spirit. Doors. Doors. Some of you will feel fire on your hands. Fire on your hands. Doors are opening. Two leaf gates. In the spirit. Fire on your hand. You will know by the fire that comes to your hand. I'm seeing fire coming on people's hands. That's what I'm seeing in the realm of the spirit. Doors opening. You must testify. Doors opening. Doors opening. Doors opening. Age long doors. Age long doors that have been closed for many years. I'm seeing an angel of the Lord stand just at the back of this young man. Please shift, my friend. These four ladies, one, two, three, four. I'm seeing an anointing on you people. One, two, three, four. I don't know what it is that God is taking out, but I'm seeing like chains being taken from your feet chains being removed in the name of jesus i decree and declare i saw an angel stand there chains being taken up from your feet in the name of jesus christ chains being taken from off your feet listen let me explain something to you this is not just some disorganized jamboree god is turning the destinies of men up. You will see people return with testimonies because there are forces. Emmanuel. I'm hearing the name Emmanuel. Who is that? Emmanuel. Please don't make the place rowdy. Emmanuel. We're going to pray for the sick now. There are four of you I'm seeing here. You have the call of God upon your life. But there are strange altars that are holding you down. In the name of Jesus, I lose you now. I lose you by the force of the spirit. I lose you. I release your ministry. I lose you. I release your ministry. Hear me. I'm speaking by the Spirit. I lose you. I release your ministry. I stand by this apostolic anointing. I lose you. If I be called of God, I lose you. I lose you from these forces. I lose you from these yokes. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are men that can be alive, let me tell you, but they are dead in the spirit. Emmanuel, I'm praying. We don't have time to minister individuals, individually, but I'm praying for you. The Lord is breaking delay from four of the families with Emmanuel. No, no, once I mention your case, the power of God is coming upon you. You will know it's your case. I stretch my hands now. Among the Emmanuels, 
and the people delay 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 there is an anointing coming now is crushing that spirit just because i'm praying for emmanuel does not mean it will not come upon you in the name of jesus delay delay god is visiting delay broken by the spirit of god please help them so they don't injure themselves he came to set the captives free to set the captives free hold on this young lady lift your hands this this yes you lift your hands i'm stretching my hands towards you i don't know what it is that i saw but i saw something like smoke the other one the smaller one with white yes i just saw something like smoke coming out of you and the lord is saying this is oppression for many years that has something to do with your abdominal region in the name of jesus christ i declare right now by the power of the holy spirit let that oppression go let it leave you let it go let it leave you right now in the name of jesus there is a woman now i'm going to pray for people generally but i don't know how we'll do this there is a barren woman in overflow three barren woman trusting god for the fruit of the womb please if if you can allow the woman to run and come god is instructing me to lay my hands on her because it's time for her to carry her child overflow three please let her run and come who is maureen maureen i'm hearing a name maureen 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 what is your name lift your hands where are you from shout jesus loud as you can jesus! let the power of witchcraft over your life be broken my dear look at me look at me shout jesus, jesus! i crush that spirit right now in the name of jesus and the man you see in your dream in the name of jesus may you never see that man again please make sure you they don't why is mama here is she maureen this woman i i'll pray for you that woman come madam is that your daughter come madam where are you coming from ma let her come sir where are you coming from i'm from area c area I'm c no, I'm, I'm going to pray for you mama you are a sincere woman but if i did not pray for you huh it's a bike that will kill you from the market in an accident this is what i'm seeing i'm seeing this woman with a leather of potato and a bike man just comes to jam her together with a truck and they just say survive by that the woman is dead i'm not a prophet of doom mama please don't be afraid in the name of jesus christ hold my hands i extend your life by the power of the holy spirit that the plague of death see let me prophesy upon someone here anyone here that the hand of death is upon you to see that you will not see the end of this year i'm praying by the spirit now i'm praying by the spirit and in the name of jesus anyone that the spirit of death is haunting anyone being haunted by the spirit of death i command that it is crushed now in jesus name what is your name my dear maureen come you will look at a beautiful lady like this but in the realm of the spirit i'm seeing a human being but no face no face like this i'm just seeing a blank face like this let me tell you what this means it's a yoke of bad luck 
that people stand and cannot bless you. You have what it takes to be blessed and rewarded. The lady on yellow, lift your hands. There's the call of God upon your life. There is a prophetic grace that is upon you. And the Lord is saying you are stepping into it right now. I stretch my hands to you. Right now in the name of Jesus. May the Lord bring you into that grace. I'm still praying for her. In the name of Jesus I declare. I'm seeing fire coming upon you right now. And that fire will unlock a dimension of the prophetic. In the name of Jesus Christ. bad luck listen I'm going to hold her but a different person is the one that will receive before I pray for her this is just allow me do my my mad thing hold my hand in the name of Jesus I'm not praying for her I'm praying for someone now by the Spirit of the Lord but the Lord is saying I should hold her as I pray for the person Lord in the name of Jesus this yoke of bad luck I'm speaking now please help them this yoke of bad luck by the power of the Holy Spirit where good things don't seem to happen to you in the name of Jesus let it be broken now 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 now let me pray for you be free by the anointing of the Holy Spirit I take away this that I'm seeing and in the name of Jesus, you have an identity in the spirit that brings honor, that brings grace and dignity. In Jesus' name I pray. Where are these ones? We are going to pray for the sick. Your name is Maureen. Are you married? You are married? Yes, sir. But you don't have a child? Yes, sir. From Overflow 3? Yes, sir. Where is your husband? not here it's not but you're married yes sir. come and stand here and watch the god of wonders i don't know you madam from overflow three you are from overflow three you are trusting god for the fruit of the womb why did you come your name is maureen what do you do madam hold on i'm a business woman you're a business woman where i used to sell at a young um random canoe but right now the business is do you know why i'm asking you no I must pray for you because this thing is not only you there is nobody doing well in your family your entire family this is what I'm seeing is a spirit huh? except you open up something and miss even physical money used to get missing from you you will keep money and count it and found find out that it's not what you kept is that true if I'm lying just say I'm lying where are you from from a new Anambra state. I'm seeing the map of Nigeria and I'm seeing the state Anambra. I'm seeing deliverance coming for people from that state now. I'm seeing deliverance coming for people from that state. Anyone, usually when God shows me this, anybody who is from that state connected by blood, the power of God begins to come upon them to bring deliverance. It's a sign and a wonder. I'm declaring right now in the name of Jesus. That anyone who is from that state and that region and there is any force and yoke that is fighting you be free right now in the name of Jesus be free in the name of Jesus be free in the name of Jesus please help them be free in the name of Jesus and Ambra state be free in the name of Jesus I'm still seeing the map in my vision be free in the name of Jesus My friend, that young man holding his hands, shout Jesus from where you are. The yoke is broken. I cast it out of your life forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Madam, I need to pray for you. Don't feel bad. Look at me. You insulted a woman some years ago. And the woman told you it will not be well with you. It was like a joke. Truly the thing followed you. This is what God is showing me. Now, I'm not a prophet of doom. I'm going to pray for you. I don't know if it, the woman annoyed you or what is it. You insulted the woman. 
and she stood and told you that it will not be well because what you were saying about her was not what she did hold my hands the bible says even the lawful captive shall be delivered let me tell you my brothers and my sisters the scourging tongues of men the scourging tongues of men except you know where you stand a cause causeless shall not stand but if there is a cause it will stand though it will stand are we together now i will pray where are your siblings madam hi this woman no oh. you are not here alone where are the rest call them just stand where you call what is their name AGK. quickly please and victor AGK, come and and who Victor, that is and my Victor, son. Yes. Victor is not your brother. Victor is a small my boy. Son, yes. Where is he? Let him come. Because I'm seeing the boy. You are saying Victor is a little boy. Ah, uh, are you married? Yes. You have a son. Yes. Your son's name too is Victor. Yes, he's the one I'm calling. Is the boy that you are talking yes. about? You said your brother. No, AGK is my brother. Then Let the boy come. Son. As young as that boy is too, if I don't pray for him, he will start stealing. Eh? There are two boys, small boys, that will be delivered from this spirit. No matter where you keep anything, they must steal it. We are not condemning people. I hope you understand what I'm saying here. God is delivering people. To the pure, all things are pure. Nobody is calling any family a bad family. But this is a place where God is visiting people. Where is the person, please? Come, celebrate him as he comes. You're welcome, sir. I will pray for you. God is going to turn your family around. This is the little boy. My friend, how are you? Come. How old are you? 11 years old. You love Jesus? Yes, sir. I will pray for you. How can a nice boy like this and the next thing start picking things? Do you know? Let me tell you. These small children that steal are not thieves. It's just that either by carelessness or lack of discernment, it was not dealt with. Because most of what they steal, they don't need it. That's how you know it's a spirit. Are we together? Yes. That's why it's important that parents lay hands on their children and speak and prophesy. Don't assume they will be spiritual by default. My friend, let me pray for you. Father, thank you for this adorable young man. And this guy has a great destiny. You see this boy? I'm looking at a star rising as I'm laying my hands on him. This is what the Lord is showing me. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you. You will be a great man by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hold this woman, the anointing of the Spirit is coming on her. In the name of Jesus Christ. Sir, what do you do? I'm a medical sales representative. You are a medical sales representative. Medical sales representative. Can I pray for you? You are a sincere person, eh? but this thing, they are just forces that want to destroy your family. I will pray for you. Eh? April, May, June. It will look like you held a charm. The way God will turn your life around. You believe it? In the name of Jesus, may that grace come upon you. Madam, come. The power of God is coming upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare this thing that I'm seeing tied to your waist. I lose it right now. By the power of the Holy Spirit, be set free now. In the name of Jesus Christ. You are the one trusting God for a child? Come. How long have you been married? Three years. Three years. No child. You too? Are you married? Five years. Four Five months. years, four months. Yes. No child. No child. Doctor said after two surgeries, they said my husband cannot impregnate me. He did surgery twice. Don't cry. Jesus is here. Huh? You went through two surgeries. Where is your husband? He's at home. He's at home. Don't cry. Where are you from? Where are you coming from? Graceland. You see, th these are the things that sometimes worry my spirit. imagine the kind of trouble that this family will go through sometimes we take some things for granted imagine the advices someone now will recommend and say go to a herbalist go and do this and don't cry my sister two surgeries you went through mm. my head 
Now, I'm seeing something being removed from your stomach. Look at what is happening to her. Yes, she went through two surgeries. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command that spirit that says your husband cannot impregnate you. In the name of Jesus, I set you free now. Madam, I set you free now. I'm praying for the rest, but I set you free now. Hold my hands. Come. In the name of Jesus, I declare supernatural miracle for you now. Release this woman now. As I'm praying for you, I'm praying for your husband wherever he is. According to the time of life, may you return with your miracle children. It's over. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. My dear, let me. Why is this woman here? You are married to Madam? No child? How long? Four years and um, five months. Four years, five months. Where are you coming from? Jigawa State. From Jigawa State. Please come. Oh dear. All the walk, 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 walk is turning things around. All the walk, 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 walk is turning things around. All the walk, walk, walk is turning things around. Oh my good. Do you know why God is dealing with these issues? Because He has declared that it's a year of extraordinary fruitfulness. Is fruitfulness from any dimension? any dimension look at this woman look at these women crying i may never understand what it means for a woman to not be able to take in i think it's the equivalent of a man not be able to provide for his family that you come back home and watch your wife and children and they say that they were hungry and you are clueless about where bread will come from my sister please don't cry who brought you here you came alone sarah huh? sarah oh dear Put your hand on your stomach. Is she a Christian? She's, she's a Christian? Yes. Okay. It doesn't matter whether you are a Muslim or Christian. The Lord, everybody the Lord healed in the Old Testament. He healed them and gave them an opportunity to hand their lives over. You just act like this just to show honor and respect people. I will pray for you. There is a name that is above every other name. And in the name of Jesus, I lay my hands upon your womb and I declare the embargo of barrenness, five years barrenness, let it be broken right now. Look at this, let it be broken right now. I'm seeing something being loose from your stomach. This is what I'm seeing. And then I'm seeing you coughing. You are now beginning to cough. This is what I'm seeing. I don't know what it is that I'm seeing, but I'm seeing something come out of you and you are coughing, coughing something out. In the name of Jesus Christ, let it be gone now let it be gone forever let it be gone forever let it be gone forever my dear put your hand on your stomach what's your name blessing, blessing. where's your husband he's not here he's not here yes. father in the name of jesus i don't care what the medical report is we agree as a family of faith that this our dear sister carries her miracle child now i decree and declare according to the time of life return with your child whatever needs to be corrected in this body now i correct it by the power ah, i'm seeing something like fire burning already on your stomach this is what i'm saying you will feel it now physically like fire on your stomach in the name of jesus christ let there be a look at what is happening to her a correction a correction of whatever is wrong in the name of jesus why are they here fruit of the womb uh, we are not praying at random we'll pray madam i will pray for you where are you coming from huh nasarawa state nasara state are you alone no I mean you me. came with who only me only you come just the woman i will pray for her we have to pray for the sick but how many of you have seen what god is doing here listen you see if you love the lord and you see god attacking
in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord just showed me something now I'm seeing the head of a human being on top of something that looks like a shrine on fire and the Lord is telling me that this is one of the mysteries behind the captivity of many people I decree in the name of Jesus Christ father whatever has had to do with blood that is responsible for the bewitchment and the plague that comes upon people in the name of Jesus by the mercy of God let there be freedom now let there be freedom now let there be freedom now I'm seeing a family of one, two, three, four, five, six graduates. Nobody's employed. Six graduates. You are all graduates. Nobody has a job. Who is that person? Six graduates. Please listen to the instruction so that you don't just jump out. Six graduates. No job. Not one person has a job. I want to pray for you. You're the one for the fruit of the womb? Huh? I have to pray for you. I'm seeing something in your stomach. Have you gone to the hospital? You've spoken with a doctor? Don't be embarrassed. I'm seeing something growing in your stomach. And this is not a baby. I will pray for you because if I don't pray for you, you will have to go through serious surgery to even allow the baby stay based on what the Lord is showing me. And I'm going to pray for you. Where are you coming from, madam? Kano. Kano. Is your husband here? Is your husband here? Yes. Where is he? Husband, sir, please come. There's Daddy something the Lord wants to do in your family. Don't worry, he's, he's here. He's coming. Thank you, sir. Thank you for coming. God bless you. I want to pray for you. You came from Kano too? You came from Kano too, sir? I'm going to pray for you. Thing come out of you. Opportunity to hand their lives. Opportunity to hand their lives over. You just act like this just to show honor and respect people. I will pray for you. There is a name that is above every other name. And in the name of Jesus, I lay my hands upon your womb. And I declare the embargo of barrenness, five years barrenness. Let it be broken right now. Look at this. Let it be broken right now. I'm seeing something being loose from your stomach. This is what I'm seeing. And then I'm seeing you coughing. You are now beginning to cough. This is what I'm seeing. I don't know what it is that I'm seeing, but I'm seeing something come out of you and you are coughing, coughing something out. In the name of Jesus Christ, let it be gone now. Let it be gone forever. Let it be gone forever. Let it be gone forever. My dear, put your hand on your stomach. What's your name? Blessing. Blessing. Where's your husband? He's not here. He's not here. Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, I don't care what the medical report is we agree as a family of faith that this our dear sister carries her miracle child now i decree and declare according to the time of life return with your child whatever needs to be corrected in this body now i correct it by the power ah, i'm seeing something like fire burning already on your stomach this is what i'm saying you will feel it now physically like fire on your stomach in the name of jesus christ let there be a look at what is happening to her a correction a correction of whatever is wrong in the name of jesus why are they here fruit of the womb uh, we're not praying at random we we'll pray madam i will pray for you where are you coming from Huh? Nasarawa State. Nasara State. Are you alone? No, I mean. You came with who? Only me. Only you. Come. Just the woman. I will pray for her. We have to pray for the sick. But how many of you have seen what God is doing here? Listen, you see, if you love the Lord and you see God attacking. In the name of Jesus Christ the Lord just showed me something now I'm seeing the head of a human being on top of something that looks like a shrine on fire 
and the Lord is telling me that this is one of the mysteries behind the captivity of many people I decree in the name of Jesus Christ father whatever has had to do with blood that is responsible for the bewitchment and the plague that comes upon people in the name of Jesus by the mercy of God let there be freedom now let there be freedom now let there be freedom now I'm seeing a family of one, two, three, four, five, six graduates. Nobody's employed. Six graduates. You are all graduates. Nobody has a job. Who is that person? Six graduates. Please listen to the instruction so that you don't just jump out. Six graduates. No job. Not one person has a job. I want to pray for you. You're the one for the fruit of the womb? Huh? I have to pray for you I'm seeing something in your stomach have you gone to the hospital you've spoken with a doctor don't be embarrassed I'm seeing something growing in your stomach and this is not a baby I will pray for you because if I don't pray for you you will have to go through serious surgery to even allow the baby stay based on what the Lord is showing me and I'm going to pray for you where are you coming from madam Kano. Kano. Is your husband here? Is your husband here? Yes. Where is he? Husband, sir, please come. There's that something the Lord wants to do in your family. Don't worry, he's, he's here. He's coming. Thank you, sir. Thank you for coming. God bless you. I want to pray for you. You came from Kano too? You came from Kano too, sir? I'm going to pray for you. Number one, God is going to give you the fruit of the womb. Number two, God is restoring your finances. You hear what I'm saying? Amen. God is restoring your finances. Amen. This is a serious issue. As you are here coming now, the financial trouble you are into is only God that can bring you out. Amen. Is that true? God is going to help you. Madam, put your hand on your stomach. In the name of Jesus Christ. Why are they here? Six graduates. No job. In the name of Jesus Christ father by your mercy and by your grace let there be a sign and a wonder in the life of this woman just keep her down in the name of jesus i declare by the power of the holy spirit everything that is wrong be corrected now in the name of jesus sir please can you hold my hands in the name of jesus i speak over your finances there is a grace that can restore and i release that grace upon you in the name of jesus christ madam let me talk to you and then we'll pray for the sick you are the both of you where are you coming from you are here in zaria yes and you are, yes i know your face six graduates no job yes sir including you yes sir come no but there are six here, people no. yes but there's no job for yes, them sir. can we agree that god will give them a job yes sir and you too yes. let's pray come hold my hands father in the name of jesus christ there is an anointing that is coming upon you eh? and is for the sake of your family in the name that is above all names i release this grace upon you and i pray let the embargo of joblessness be broken now even on both of you i use you as a point of contact to pray now something is leaving this lady's hand you something is leaving your hand i cost that yoke now in the name of jesus your hand is a symbol of your productivity and I declare in the name of Jesus, let there be liberty. Liberty for all of you. Liberty. I open the doors of jobs. In Jesus' name I pray. Why is he here? You are a graduate. Six. Six. From where, please? From Abuja. Abuja. SOM, yes. You are a, a school of ministry student. Yes, Madam, let me talk to you. Where are you coming from? Natural State. Yes, sir. Are you married? Bring the person that begins to laugh in the spirit. The hand of God is coming upon someone. The 
Bible says the shouts of joy and victory will not depart from the tents of the righteous. Please bring the person. Let's save time. Father, I establish this victory over this lady's life. The oppression over your life and your family is broken now and broken forever. Broken now and broken forever. Ah, we don't have time. Our time is gone. But the Lord is showing me a very serious vision of a lady that entered a relationship with a gentleman and left him and the guy vowed i'm seeing this guy carry not you now i'm seeing this guy carry a photo and taking it to a herbalist in kaduna state hello Madonna. under this grace whose name has been taken for any diabolic activity i stand by the hand of god whoever took it there judgment comes on them now whoever took it there judgment comes on them now whoever took it there judgment comes on them now Whoever took it there, judgment comes on them now. I'm still praying. Whoever took it there, judgment comes on them now. This is what the Lord showed me. Carry the name of the lady and kept it there. That number one, no decent man will ever come and ask her out. And number two, she will never give birth. This is what I'm seeing. Who shall say a thing and it will come to pass? That when God has not declared it so. I reverse every pronouncement over anyone here in the name of Jesus. I want to pray a prayer. Please forgive me for tonight's miracle service. The way God is taking us. I want to pray. Shade and doctor, please come. The Lord wants to end an old issue in your family. Please come. This is what the Lord is showing me. This thing I'm seeing is as old as more than 60, 70 years. The Lord is opening my eyes to see now. Please, I want to pray for you. Those under the anointing, help me. Please, I'm just using two of you as a point of contact. But I'm seeing a spirit. This is an ancient spirit. The way this thing works is that men rise. The moment they get to the zenith of anything they are doing, they must die. This is the spirit I'm seeing. Please listen. I'm not... I'm just using them and I'm ministering the way God is showing me. These are not the only families with this thing, but the Lord is saying I should deal with it now. Provided you have not gotten to the pinnacle, you, no death will touch you. But the moment you touch that bar, you are going down. And the Lord wants to destroy it. Because God is using both of you to start a new program in the family. I will follow the lion. I will follow the lamb. I will follow the lion. I will follow the lamb. I believe in the lion. I believe in the lion. I believe in the lamb. Bring that little girl, as small as that girl you see is. This girl you are seeing is a deliverer of her family. As small as you are seeing this, this little girl. Because this girl stands as an altar of righteousness over her family. And as small as she is, the devil wants to kill her. 
in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare, I use this, my dear daughter, as a point of contact. That everything that is not the planting of God, I scatter it now in the name of Jesus. May God use this, our precious daughter, and truly may she be the deliverer of her family. In the name of Jesus. A lady is going to start running because I'm about to pray over a spirit that is in her family and that spirit is going to start driving her to run away so i'm telling you in advance you are going to see the person stand up to start running away it's, it's not even this lady i'm talking about this somebody in the crowd you will not even you will not be in control of yourself it's a spirit because i'm about to rebuke it right now father i thank you for the bonire family and by extension the various families the altar that sits upon this family even the lawful captives shall be delivered even the lawful captives i break that yoke now i stand by the rod of a higher priesthood that ancient yoke that brings down great men over this family be broken I open up the door of increase. Rise to the senate of your profession. I forbid the spirit of death once and for all. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, an issue that is age long. Let me tell you this. A mighty deliverance has happened to this family. This thing I'm telling you, fought their grandparents fought their parents and if not delivered now will still fight them if there's anyone here that this same spirit works in your family you rise to a position and crash down in the name of Jesus at the count of three let fire land upon such individuals and scatter that altar scatter that altar forever in the name of Jesus Christ it took words to establish the covenant that brought this family in trouble now I declare to you a new order starts in your lineage a new order starts in your family where children live long and they become successful and that every embargo of witchcraft once and for all is broken in the name of Jesus madam I can pray for you now where did you say you are from just just keep her somewhere there or bring a chair and keep her. You are not from Nasarawa State. You stay in Nasarawa yes, State. Sir. Where are you from? Eboin State. Eboin State. Eboin State. I want to pray for you. Am I wasting your time, please? One encounter with the power of God is enough to turn your life around. My friend, this man wearing um, you. Yes. Did you come alone? Who did you come with? Where is your wife? Come. It's time for God to change your life. Stand up. Stand up. Please stand up. Stand up. Where are you coming from? From campus, yes, sir. You are from campus, yes, here. sir. What do you do? I am lecturing in this. You are a lecturer. Yes, sir. I want to pray for you. Sir, you are not supposed to be at this level now. You are a very brilliant man. You, but there, you are intelligent. I don't know you, you but sir. you are a brilliant man. It's even you, too grace for you to be given a lecturing job. Yes, sir. It's because there is no way they could deny you. Yes, you are too exceptional. Yes, sir. You are supposed to be abroad now. Yes, I don't know what has kept yes, you down. Sir. This is what I'm seeing in the spirit. You are not supposed to be here. Yes, sir. Yes, but sir. somebody carried your issue and put it under the table. You see, you see what we are talking about. That you carry a man's destiny see let me say it i'm praying to you from my heart that in the name of jesus whatever belongs to you 
and has been hijacked by the wicked hearts of men it must be released this night it must be released this night sir please stand up what's your department political science, sir. Political science. can i pray for you yes sir you will know that there is a god in heaven amen what do you do my dear you are not doing anything. No, sir. I have to pray for you. Yes, sir. Huh? That trip abroad, you must go. Amen. Amen. Because there is an honor and there is a professor that God has destined that you will meet. Amen. And I'm going to pray. Do you believe what I'm saying? Yes, sir. In the name of Jesus Christ, sir, I pray for you. By the power of the Holy Spirit, I release you and I release your destiny. Amen both for you and your wife i decree and declare scale new heights in your profession in the name of jesus christ number two there is a friend in your life and the lord is telling me to tell you to be careful there is a friend in your life be careful i won't say more than that be careful what god has joined let no man put asunder I'll stop there. In the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord honor you. In Jesus' name. Madam, you have been here for a while. Let's pray. What are you trusting God for? For marriage. Who came from Joss? Joss. Joss. Where did you come from? Madam, where did you come from? Bokos. Huh? Bokos. From Joss. Not state of origin where you came from that you left it and came huh i want to pray for you what do you do i, I i'm a secretary you are what i'm a secretary you are a secretary yes, sir. come let me pray for you I... one of these days we'll just trust god and do a night vigil honestly so that we can deal with this issue seriously you may think that time is being wasted until you see what God is turning around in your life. All these people came from Joss. Madam, say in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I will not have what they call that pregnancy. That they have to do, um, no, bridge is bridge or something like that. This is what I'm saying. I'm not pregnant. All done. Let me pray for you. Come. You are sick. It looks like pregnancy like is breached this is what i'm saying the pregnancy that looks like is that will open you up and carry something out where are you coming from joss what did they say is wrong with you um, multiple fibers no a man don't feel embarrassed can i talk to you a man used to come in a dream huh yes, and sleep with you yes, sir. is that true yes, sir. that's what brought this pregnancy I'm a man of God. Don't be af afraid. You, you heard the story I told you now. Yes, sir. Madam, if I'm lying, look at me before the whole world and say I'm a liar. That you go to bed and a man comes and all of a sudden this started coming. Of course, medically you would think that, okay, you check it. There is nothing there. Yet the pregnancy will not go. How long has this thing been? Three years. Three years. Don't cry. Don't cry. Who did you come with? May this place remain a place of solutions. Was it not the fallen angels that met with the daughters of men and they became pregnant physically? and had strange go and listen to my teaching the mystery of the serpent and the woman my sister can i pray for you you believe in jesus look at this adorable lady look at imagine a woman carrying this for three years is that pregnancy a, does a human being stay three years in the stomach are you married of course imagine what this this means to her marital life put your hand there 
father in the name of jesus christ look at this look at what is happening to the woman in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare that every seed that has not been planted by god let it be uprooted in this body is it not written that every tree that has not been planted by my father it must be uprooted i uproot this right now in the name of jesus christ i uproot this right now in the name of jesus by a strange mystery may this thing begin to go down and disappear from this woman's body in the name of jesus christ just keep her down there madam let me pray for you what do you want the lord to do for you i'm believing him for a life partner life partner do you believe god can give you a life partner yes, sir. do you love jesus? love jesus you are born again father the bible says male and female he created them she's not embarrassed she's standing sincerely and telling you that i came so that god will bless me with a life partner i lay my hands upon you and i decree and declare may god bring a responsible man to your life Amen. you will not marry a man that will make your yesterday better than your tomorrow Amen. in the name of jesus christ i declare it so and for all these people standing i pray for them may the lord himself bring miracles over their life Amen. in jesus name i pray i may not have time to minister to all of you one by one please forgive me huh coincidentally i'm going to just tomorrow i'll be in just saturday sunday i'm ministering in a conference i'm excited i'll be in house on the rock at rayfield saturday and sunday i mean just but let me pray for you all of you who came all the way my dear look at me you love jesus yes sir with all your heart yes sir i drive the boy that the devil wants to bring to your life say amen amen you you may not understand what i'm saying but let me repeat myself i drive i didn't say god drove him in the name of jesus christ as one who loves you well eh? i drive any irresponsible boy that is coming in the name of prayer warrior to destroy your life amen in the name of jesus i'm amen. not looking down it is god's will that all men be saved but then I'm telling you that in the name of Jesus Christ, everything that would destroy your destiny, let it be far from you. Amen. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord. For all of you, I may not know why you came, but let me pray for you. In the name of Jesus, return with your testimony. In the name of Jesus, return with your testimonies. In the name, just believe what I'm praying for you. In the name of Jesus, return with your testimonies. God bless you. Please go back to your seat, my God. Can we still pray for the sick? How many of you are trusting God for healing? Let me see your hands out there. Okay, this is what is going to happen. It's okay, I'm, I'm going to pray for you. you. You came, you brought them. Okay, I'm going to pray for you now. You just relax. Now, please, because of time, those under the anointing, just leave them if there's no... Usher, hold on. A lady usher, place your hand on that girl. Any lady usher. Release her now. Out! In the name of Jesus. Let it come to an end now. And forever. Release her destiny. Release her family. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let there be restoration. Let there be testimonies. Please, this is how we are going to do it. Because our time is already gone. We are going to do three things at the same time. Please listen. Number one, you are going to be submitting your prayer requests. Number two, those who are trusting God for healing in the various overflows. Please, aside from those that I prayed for for barrenness, if your reason of coming here is barrenness, whether you are in overflow one, two, or three, I want you to come to overflow one. I want to pray for you myself. Aside from that, please, you are trusting God for a healing miracle. 
I want you to move to your various overflows. So those at overflow one, move to the front of your projector stand. Overflow two, the same thing. Overflow three, the same thing. Those by the roadside, the roadside down to second equa. Join overflow two. You can join overflow two, please. Usher's protocol PR department, coordinate yourself to help them, please. So that the people know what they are doing. Praise the Lord. Those in here, you can come. You can come. The Lord bless you. Now, there are going to be men and women of God scattered across these various places who are ministering under a corporate anointing. Make sure you are standing for healing, please. Make sure you are standing for healing. No, no, no. Those for fruit of the womb, come in, please. The main auditorium. I want to lay hands on you by myself. It doesn't matter what overflow you are. If it is fruit of the womb, please come. The main auditorium. I want to pray for you. Now, please listen. Just a touch is enough. You don't have to start explaining and telling the men of God this is a problem. Sometimes God can give them words. If they don't, don't worry. Just a touch and you will go back. I want you to believe this. That's why you came. Are we together? While that is happening, if you have your prayer request here, you can just wave it and pass it. Let there be an usher. Okay, um, peace is here. You can pass it. Let there be an usher or somebody. Please, um, the various departments, coordinate yourself so that you are collecting this. Let's make it fast. Those online, um, you can use our social media platforms to submit your requests. And we're going to pray on it right now. Please, quickly, quickly. A Jimmy and a Jimmy and promise will go to overflow one. A Jimmy and promise will go to overflow one. Um, Pastor Alpha and Benga will go to overflow three. Overflow three. Pastor Femi and Kenny. And Ima go to overflow two. Also extend to those by the roadside. Extend to those by the roadside. Did you get? Let me pray for you, Pastor Lawrence. Come. I will pray for you and then you will join those at overflow three. In the name of Jesus Christ, grace for you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let the anointing, let the grace of the Spirit come upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Now, please, worship team, you give us songs of the Spirit while we are ministering. And as soon as hands are laid on you, you can go back rejoicing. Those who are seated, don't be careless, be praying in the Spirit. Because God is solving people's problems while you gather the prayer requests. If you are yet to submit yours, just wave it and there will be someone to reach you. In the name of Jesus. Father, we decree and declare that within the next 10 or so minutes that we have, do a quick walk in the life of your people. In the name of Jesus. Do a quick walk in the life of your people. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Someone will fall under the anointing here. Once that happens, the power of God will start move to heal. Right here, those in front here. Okay, so I can start praying now. In the name of Jesus, be healed. In the name of Jesus Christ, be healed. Praise the Lord. Please, everyone stand. Say after me, in the name of Jesus. Whether you are inside or outside, say in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that the next dimension of my life opens up now. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Please begin to pray.
in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ I like you to begin to declare that every request you have written here that by the grace of God this will be the last time you have to visit this issue please pray please pray our time is gone but let's make use of the time stretch your hands here and begin to decree and declare that in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God every request that I've written here by the God of heaven let this be the last time may the Lord arise and solve impossible situations arise in the name of Jesus are you praying father that these Egyptians that I see today I see them no more forever the requests of those localized here and those who have posted their requests on our social media platforms we declare intervention we declare breakthrough we declare increase hallelujah in the name of Jesus Christ we declare and we agree as a family of faith that this request will turn into testimonies in your life we declare that this request turn into supernatural testimonies the same way I am standing upon them, I decree you stand upon every situation that is represented here in the name of Jesus Christ. I know that you are still Dearly praying for beloved, a few people. I hope but you were blessed pray by this message. The final I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our, our man of God, God, Apostle Joshua Salman. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him. It says that the, the sun cross, shall the not smite thee by may have free flow in him, the moon that he may be granted night. boldness to continue I with the and declare of Jesus Christ in that every economic hardship as he continues that is bringing the saints to their knees and, then and causing them to compromise. To video, I declare that you are exempted from it now. A comment in the comment section and then keep every sharing, prayerlessness and and represented in this place that the name. grace to pray ah, seems to have yeah. gone down in the name of Jesus fresh fire upon your altar fresh fire upon your altar anybody introduced by the devil into your life or your circle to destroy you i sever you from them right now in jesus name i speak favor over your life and i declare in the name of jesus walk in favor 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 therefore god has exalted him and given him a name that is above every other name it says that at the mention of that name every knee must bow i declare whatever must bow in your life from tonight let it bow right now let me pray for you finally and especially for those of us who are not within this city if you traveled far and came i'm praying for you now in the name that is above all names to all our visitors and all those who connect with us from far that includes those from our social media platforms i decree and declare whatever the issue of concern is that brought you here 
Return with the answers now. Return with the answers now. You will not need to tell people you came here. There will be the radiance and the glory of the spirit upon your life. I declare that every door that has refused to open, even as the Lord kept revealing here, I enforce it and we call that door open now. The new month is the fourth month of the year. The number four stands for balance. That means that whatever is left that must be shown in your life, you are blessed here but not yet blessed here. You are blessed here but not yet blessed here. I declare completion for you now. May April bring you completion. In the name of Jesus Christ. 